Hello and welcome to Spelunkers, a game exploration podcast. This is episode one of three for our exploration on Outriders, a game from People Can Fly, published by Square Enix. Um, if you didn't already know, my name is Tyler, but I am not alone. I am joined by a murder of hosts, a gaggle, uh, you, you get the idea. Um, I'm here with everybody that you know and love and some special guests. Chris. Hi. Ryan. Good evening. Tom. Hi. <laughs> and we're joined by some very special guests, Victorian Genetics, who you may Hello. know from our Game of the Year discussion. What's up? And friend of the show, one of three hosts of Draft Punks, Mr. Rob Hudak. Hello, sir. Oh, hey, hi, hello there. That's what I'm supposed to say, right? That's the one. <laughs> That's the one. Yeah, <laughs> nailed it. Usually we just start off by bashing Tyler, though, like something he doesn't know about the game. Or... But he's great. <laughs> well, Tyler's yeah. great. <laughs> I'm, I'm nailing this introduction, by the way. All right, for this chunk of the game, we are covering the beginning of the game all the way through Eagle Peaks. So that includes all seven side quests, and we even cap the level off at level 15. That way we can talk about extra abilities and stuff in further episodes. Um, so let's kick it off with some initial impressions. Chris, uh, what do you think about the game so far? It's uh, incredibly fun when it works, but it's uh, also had a lot of problems at launch with connectivity. Uh, PC crossplay just started working today or yesterday. Uh, and then like Xbox still wasn't working for some reason, but now everything seems to be working crossplay wise finally. But I mean, we're like a little over a week out from launch. Um, you know, it's an online game. It's going to have these kind of connectivity issues. It's like almost a given at this point, but it's still, it was, it was very uh, nerve wracking for us knowing we had a recording coming up and that we had a, you know, a deadline, but I'm having a ton of fun when I'm actually playing it. Yep. Ryan. Uh, yeah, I mean, exactly what Chris just said. This game is a blast once you're loaded in and everything's running. But uh, uh, HUD issues on PC, obviously the connectivity issues that just got fixed today. Uh, I've had a few crashes, nothing extraneous for a brand new release, but not the most stable thing ever. Uh, which is weird because, you know, the demo didn't have these connectivity issues. There were other things that, you know, gave us a cause for concern in the demo, but we experienced different problems than the ones uh, initially experienced i would say yeah tom uh i'm gonna quote another friend of the show it's fine <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah there are weird bugs like i have to log in twice when i'm trying to play because when i start the game up it'll say it'll do the little spinny thing and go signed in exclamation point yep and then it just sits there mm. so i have to quit the game restart it bring it in uh another thing that i think is awful is there is no voice chat uh, for cross-platform. I was playing with my dad and I literally had to start an Xbox party on my phone because there's no way to talk through the game. Hmm. Which I thought was very not Obnoxious. good. <laughs> yeah. So I'm talking on my phone trying to play with I'm my actually dad. I'm glad that you brought that up because we were playing cross-play earlier and I don't even think that's something that we thought about because we were using Discord. Right, well so then that, that, that would be it. Like, if I was playing with anyone else, yeah, we'd be using Discord but obviously my dad doesn't have Discord. Yeah. yeah, so that is so. that's interesting though that that is something that is not implemented. And I wouldn't have known that unless I you know tried to play with it. But yeah, it was just like oh my god. But yeah, it's the game's fine. How you feeling, genetics? Uh, I'm liking it overall. I, not too big a fan of two of the classes as far as solo play goes, but group wise, it's, everything's pretty good so far. So, Rob. Uh, yeah, I mean, echoing a lot of what's been said so far. Uh, it's it had a rough, unstable uh, launch, but whenever we're in the game and just in the thick of shit shooting it, uh, I, I have an absolute blast. And yeah, the there have been some. Uh, it's it's funny that Tom brings up the uh, the cross play uh, voice chat stuff because yeah, it is becoming increasingly more and more of an issue in games that have cross play that oversight when they don't have built in voice comms because uh, that's that's the thing is a lot of these games do have that built in and then when you don't have it it its absence is felt unless you are already like one of the people that are constantly in Discord. Um, but for for instance like my fiance has it on xbox and plays with her family and if i wanted to play with her i could do the xbox pc app and just do the party through that and that works just fine 
if she wanted to play on PS4 or 5, no option. Yeah, it's, it's so weird. Obnoxious. But otherwise, like, yeah, it's I'm having a great time with it. Cool. Yeah, I mean, I agree with everything that's been said. It's it's a blast when you're playing it. It, it definitely has its issues, and it's, it, there's there's some bugs that need to be addressed. But, I mean, we're a little over a week into this thing. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, sky's the limit, really, on what they're going to be able to do with it. Especially when people as... can fly. You know. Exactly. <laughs> as far as just, like, updates and stuff. And uh, that's something I want to address up front. I, I feel like their community team has been absolutely crushing it as far as feedback and uh getting out to the community and telling everybody what's going on with the game and just the transparency that is there up front is incredible and you don't see that from a lot of studios especially uh bigger studios that are published by somebody massive like square enix so it's really yeah. nice to see Go ahead. i was gonna say yeah i do think that is an important thing because i'm seeing a lot of the commentators and stuff on youtube say oh it's not a big deal because every 30 minutes they're telling us oh we're still working on it we have no idea what's going on or what it, when it's going to be working but i'd rather somebody give me that news than just come out in the early morning be like oh yeah we're having server issues it might be fixed and then we hear nothing for like a day yeah i don't know fuck it whatever. something's happening exactly. right <laughs> as long as they're communicating and i don't really give a frick if it's hey we don't know what's going on we're jerking off in the corner and <laughs> yeah just tell me That's that you know it's an issue. <laughs> Just tell me that you know it's happening at the Don't very do that least, near the server. so I can go play Monster yeah. Hunter or what the hell ever else, and I know it's at least going to get addressed at some point. That's all I really need. Right, and it's it's good that you you bring that up too, as there was something I really appreciated about just their general communication in general, and also like that whole like Steam page slash Reddit patch note post they did where they were detailing everything that they were intending some of the reasoning behind why and then that server issue debrief explaining specifically like okay it wasn't that that our servers were we didn't anticipate server capacity for all this shit it's like no like we're having massive technical issues with the way with which our ram is being pulled on these servers to dive into that and like the way they broke that down i love to see that stuff so please continue that more devs should do that yeah and it's it's for people like us and people who mm. are into this shit heavy that will go into those reddit posts and see that and they'll be like oh, okay i understand 100 percent of what is going mm-hmm. on here so i have no reason to be frustrated anymore i can move on wait for the next post yeah. and update and then i can go on about the game and enjoy totally. it for what it is you know, so many games coming out right now. Why not just like, okay, this isn't working at the moment. Go play something else for a little That's bit. Like That's like the biggest fun. annoyance, really, is just the impatience of everybody. I'm like, there's yeah. so many freaking games coming out. And yep. I bet most of you are on Game Pass right now. Yeah. Go load up a different Game Pass game and shut up. Like, it's fine. They're working on it. It only yeah. took like two days, I think, for servers to get to at least a stable enough point for solo play. The uh, general crossplay obviously is not until like, today that it's been fixed, but mm. it's not that bad off compared to other situations like cyberpunk or whatever, you know? I'm mm. glad that you brought that up. Uh, before we like start going into story stuff, uh, what's everybody playing on? Chris? PS5. Ryan? PC? Tom? Uh, I wish I was playing on Game Pass, but apparently I didn't cancel my pre-order, so I'm playing it on PS5. I wish I didn't pay $60 oh, for this. <laughs> Jesus. I am also playing on PS5. Genetics, what are you playing on? Series X. Ew, Rob. PC. So we're kind of rubbing, running the gambit here, so that's good. Mm-hmm. Um, Nobody's right, playing so... on Switch? It's not a thing. <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Boo this man. Mute Chris. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can do. <laughs> All right. Uh, well, let's let's get into the story. So um, we start off uh, a couple of spaceships traveling s- through space. You find out that you've been traveling for about eighty three years. Um, it's because the human race has destroyed the Earth basically and had to flee to find another home. Surprise, surprise. And um, they find this planet, Enoch. Enoch, and it's the habitable yeah. planet that they have found thus far. Uh, so they're trying to create a new home and uh, for the surviving members of the Earth who have made it onto these ships because from what they have said, it was a select few and many have been left behind. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so from the jump, we get our character customization. It, I mean, what are you guys' thoughts on the character customization? Crappy. 
Like, yeah, absolutely. It's too abysmal. And, like, the color tones are all, like, the exact same color tone. It yep. was like, do you want dark brown or slightly lighter but still dark brown? And you're like, I don't fucking care then. And then, like, <laughs> all the haircuts are, like, oh, I'm a millennial blue check mark on Twitter. <laughs> it's like, no, where's, like, the longer hair for the females? Where's, like... It just the hairstyles look too weird and there there's nothing that i don't know it just feels too limited like no eye colors no hair colors that pop no anything whatsoever i was like just made them all very basic and i was like okay i'm done yeah it's interesting how banal they can kind of be for how edgy of a tone it's going for right <laughs> yeah. i agree yeah since i'm old i took the white hair and literally half the time when i'm looking at my guy in in game he's his hair's like just dark brown I'm like oh wow there's some What's hair bugs on in this here? game <laughs> uh, yeah there's super hair bugs and like every game i play i always try to play as a black character and one of the things i have an issue with with this game and the character customization is the black skin tone is dependent upon what face that you choose mm -hmm. and like i okay so you're saying i can't be this color skin tone because i have this face I think that's really weird. It yeah. doesn't make yeah. any sense to me. It's a weird arbitrary tie. Yeah, and, and I don't know. It's just something about that just doesn't sit super right with me. In a no, weird because, way. yeah, it's basically you're stereotyping it and yeah. Yeah, like, racial yeah. profiling. Like, okay, you got a big nose, so you're a darker skin. Or yeah, something. or something. You know, like, like it's like, I'm pretty sure my guy is Asian. Yeah, and it's just one of those things. Like, I always, every character I always create is always black, and it's just always super frustrating when it's like okay i want that face but i i don't like this skin tone i would like to have a darker skin tone but i can't choose that yeah and then with the hair options as well you know there, there's not a lot of good like black hairstyles as well which mm -hmm. as coming from a white guy on the internet it's, it seems really stupid to say but it's like i always try to go like with the authentically black character because i don't see that a lot in games mm -hmm. and so i want to represent that myself same because right. nobody else is going to represent that obviously and one of the things with the hair is there is uh, like dreadlocks that you can get, but there's this weird bug. Like if you have a helmet on, where they'll just like randomly like phase through the helmet, so your helmet yep. will have like I have that weird <laughs> dreadlock hair. I have had that. I play yeah. with helmets off, so it's not like that. I haven't seen that on my guy because I do have a my black guy with dreadlocks probably looks exactly the same as yours, which is part of the problem that I'm talking about. Mm -hmm. But I don't really see that because I play with and, helmets. And off I think in that's general, an issue, but... right? It's like if we were all to create a black character or an Asian character or any kind of character, they're all going to have like way too similar of a look because well, yeah, they definitely all look similar no matter what now. Yeah, it's yeah. very funneled. Yeah, because it's all predetermined by what face you chose. And I just right. think that's weird. Yeah, I've created yeah. three females and tried to make them look pretty different. And with two of them, I just I failed utterly. They look almost exactly the same, even though I picked yeah. completely different options. <laughs> Also, one thing that's kind of weird with the character creator is that you can't, like, most things are kind of homogenized, but like you said, the faces are locked to certain skin tones, and then you can't use makeup on a male character for some reason, which just seems very silly and backwards thinking. Right. Yeah, because yeah, some of the options, uh, even for women with the, the makeup options that they have, straight up on even makeup, they're just, like, color markings and, like, mud and stuff like that. And like, then, like, like, you can't even cu customize the color of the makeup, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's, it's yeah, like, correct. <laughs> what the hell is the point then? Like, it's yeah. just, it's too rudimentary. I don't know why it doesn't go at least a little bit deeper when every other game has at least a little bit of sliders and stuff yeah. going on. Do you want Black Rouge or Smoky Rouge? <laughs> exactly. I, I think the difference would be, too, if it didn't give you the option to toggle your armor sets to be visible or not. So, like, mm -hmm. if you have your face visible... Like, obviously, that's going to mean something to you because that's your manifestation of your character that you're trying to put agency into. Right? Yeah. You know, F funny touchstone, but this is kind of speaking volumes is it's worse than Destiny 1 and 2's character creator, which is not good. Right. <laughs> yeah. At least you could change a lot more colors for Destiny. <laughs> yeah. And at least, I will say the one thing I do appreciate about the character customization is no matter how bad you make it, you can always change it. Yeah. yeah, you can always oh, change yeah. your appearance, which I appreciate. Yeah. Which I do like that. It's yeah. just like That's I the haven't one thing. booted it up at all, that little change appearance spot, because it's like, what am I going to change to? Right. Like, yeah, I wonder so if that's 
they're gonna change it at some point. That's yeah, what I feel like. That's what I'm thinking is they'll they'll add more options at some point probably. Hopefully if there's enough fan outcry maybe they will. So get on Twitter and harass them, right? Yeah. Wait. Start no, crying. Yeah. Start yeah. crying everybody. <laughs> Well, we just have to post a super popular podcast into the Reddit thread, and then everybody will be like, oh, yeah, they said that. Oh, yeah, You're right. True. Do you know anyone that has a super popular podcast? Yeah, yeah we're on it. It's crazy. <laughs> 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 All right. Uh, getting back into it. So uh, we're in the prologue, and this is basically just a lot of tutorial up front. You're on the ground. You're walking with Tanner, and you're just learning the movement mechanics. You're learning how to walk. You're learning how to get over objects. Um I'm wondering, did you guys talk to Tanner once you got to mm -hmm. the camp, once you set up the camp, did you get in any of his backstory? Yeah. I'm pretty sure I did about like the kids and stuff and like him yeah. working his way through the system in weird governmental like loophole ways or something. Yeah, it's interesting because you find out that uh, Tanner was one of the few Outriders who made it onto the ship, but his brother did not. His brother died back on Earth. And then you find out that he actually has a daughter on one of the, the other ship that's orbiting Enoch still, and she's actually pregnant with his grandchild. Mm -hmm. And I, I thought that was really interesting. It gives his character, like, I don't know. Uh, it's weird how you uh, said that, because it makes it seem like he impregnated her. <laughs> that does, oh, yeah. kind of sounds like that. Yeah. You say that, that was because... the loophole he employed. <laughs> I, I, oh, my God. I want to get my notebook out, because when I was writing notes, I was like, oh, he's got a kid on the other ship. Oh, that's his daughter. Oh, fuck. And then I scratched it all out. Like, he impregnated yeah, his daughter. No, I the same realization on my second go at the prologue. Yeah, I will say yeah. that the the writing in that is a little stilted because it's, the first yeah. time it comes across as though it's his wife. Yep. And then you have to like really pay it. But it's like weird phrasing like my little girl. And so you're uncertain if he's referring to it as his daughter, or then it's his daughter or his wife. But then like, like it's probably his daughter i'm gonna go out on a limb and say yeah. his daughter but it was not clear the first time <laughs> yep and then i i have this is a personal note here but as soon as i got through this conversation the server crashed for the first time for me that tracks, <laughs> yeah. so, that tracks. Uh, i had to do the entire tutorial all over again yeah uh, at some point too i think it crashed on me during the well that was like during the demo um, did yeah. anybody actually replay the prologue after the yeah. game officially yeah. launched? Because yeah. yeah. I came across one cutscene on a side quest <laughs> later where, and I even showed Chris it, the cutscene was like entirely different. There was like dialogue that they clearly cut out for the demo, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, was you know there anything was? like That's that in the prologue at all? It was in, it wasn't in the prologue, it was in like the next city, Rift Town, which was also in the demo. But uh, yeah. it was like the one where you're getting the weapon shop, that lady. Has you rescue that dialogue. lady, and oh. it takes on an entirely different tone. Like, there's so much more emotion in that scene, which is later, obviously. We're not at that point. I'm mm. just curious if the prologue, because I didn't replay it, because it's so basic and it, kind it of boring to, to play through. It seemed to be, like, note for note. Okay. Cool. Yeah, yeah, it was identical. Yeah, I mean, I skipped everything in the demo. So, so it's like, I don't <laughs> care about the story. I know, I mean, I know I'm going to play it over again, but I'm like, I don't yeah, need to right. hear all this dialogue. For but, sure. yeah, that whole intro takes a while to get through. Uh, yeah. But I do like how you can notice uh, a few places where they uh, drew inspiration from. Like the vehicles, very much look like Mass Effect, uh, the Mako. Like mm -hmm. at least right away, right now. Like obviously, further along, they don't look like that anymore because you can change them. I think the vehicle animation looks like absolute <clears throat> trash. At the yeah. Beginning. But oh, also, yeah. uh, you can it see looks they like drew... a Lego brick being dragged across the ground. <laughs> 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 it's like, that does not look good. <laughs> Uh, fine, I'll let it go. It's fine. Uh, but also, like the weird black stuff that starts floating up as you're walking through that gets in the guy's lung. This very uh, Prometheus alien mm, yeah. uh, covenant. Like, you, like I was noticing all these things. I'm very much more of the sci-fi over fantasy. Like I like them both, mm -hmm. but I would go mm -hmm. more towards sci-fi, which is weird that I can't get into this game yet. Um, but I don't know. Yeah, I I do think. <laughs> I think it's fu kind of funny. It feels almost this game is like a blunt hammer, a very very blunt hammer uh, sometimes. But like seeing that initially was like, are they trying to make uh, some sort of theme about like oil conservation? <laughs> like like we destroyed all the oil on this. Now the oil's fighting back. Yeah. Right. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> sure. <clears throat> So uh, you talk to Tanner, and then he tells you to go talk to your best buddy, Jakob Dabrowski. And uh, oh, so you get your first uh, shooting tutorial. 
or you can get some optional dialogue with uh, Jakob. Uh, it's he doesn't really tell you much. Yeah, yeah, he kind of fills in your history of being an outrider and like, remember that battle we had together? I pulled you up and you survived. And it's like, oh, okay. But yeah. from the jump right here, we can all agree, uh, Jakob is awesome, right? Yeah, I like yeah. him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All yeah. team Jakob, very cool. cool. He's a guy that is in the game. All right, Tom, we get it. <laughs> we get it. <laughs> I mean, that's just science. You can't argue that. <laughs> yeah, I, I do like, that. You I do like the shooting tutorial, correct. though. In how you're like kind of perched on a cliff, and he has this like AR simulation going off over this cliff, and you're like mm. watching these AR tanks and like different enemies pop up and learning Looks how to cool. shoot. It looked very cool, and it was just yeah. an interesting aesthetic to like this very alien environment that you're sitting in. Yeah, mm. it wasn't fun with no HUD on. I'll tell you that. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, broken HUDs. <laughs> yeah. Was a common bug for PC. It seemed like pretty much exclusively. Uh, um, had, it was regularly repeatable. Basically, upon every time you turn on the game and load into the game, HUD gone. Yeah. Hopefully, mm. something that's been fixed with this latest it patch. Has. Have you it's, played it's, much? It's yeah. Fixed. Think of all Great. the beautiful pictures you could take if you didn't have any HUD. You know, real quick as an aside, it's it's funny that you bring that up because there there are some cool vistas this game has. Yeah, it's and, beautiful in some areas. Yeah, and we were remarking on it as well, like. Uh, Ryan and I keep talking about it, and then we were talking about it again with uh, Tyler today when he mentioned the fact that, man, I wish I could. This had a photo mode. And it made me bemoan the fact that there's no instant on off toggle for all HUD. It is like 15 different elements that you have to go and switch individually. Yeah, it's a lot, yeah. I wish there was just one. You could turn it all off so you could take photos because there would be moments where I would love to do that. Yeah. Right. Right. This uh this tutorial for shooting um I actually liked quite a bit but it it is definitely misleading which has been talked about a lot I feel like uh, on podcasts like it really feels like Gears of War and you're probably not gonna have a good time trying to play this game like Gears of War once you get beyond this intro. Yep. Whenever I was solo playing on my Pyromancer, that's like the class that I feel like you play it most like Gears of War honestly because like the Mid-range. other three they're like. They want you to get into the fight in order to heal. The Pyromancer is more so about managing your burning and stuff in order to get your heals off. So you pretty much have to be in cover. And I, all of his abilities go past cover. So it's like... I yeah, I'd, I'd say the Technomancer to me specifically is the one that is built so much for being in cover. Because any damage that you do, you heal for. Right. Uh, and so like, hide him behind cover, pop and turret up. I don't that, know. I'm just seeing all the technomancers run out, and then they summon the freaking little Gatling gun, and then they just tank people forever, and the they're just minigun. killing everything with the little yeah, minigun or whatever. Because you're yeah. constantly healing while you're shooting dudes. Well, so, it's pretty yeah, great. Yeah, that's, that's something we can get into when we talk about the classes a little bit more, but I appreciate that, that, that you could do that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You could go that route or my route. It's funny. Yeah. I, I did not draw any Gears of War comparisons at all until I saw it popping up online. I just automatically thought it felt like The Division to me. Yeah, I that's mean, where I went because I haven't played a Gears of War since 3, uh, but I've played Division 1 and 2 pretty extensively. But I, I, even that comparison doesn't feel great because Division is so much more stick your butt in cover. Yeah. Um, but that was the closer line that I, I yeah, drew. Like the shooting and the way like the numbers felt and just the way that the guns felt, it, it all felt like The Division to me. I was like putting your hand into an old glove, you know what I mean? It just felt yeah. very oh, I've, comfortable. I've, I felt the shooting was more like Gears of War. I, I, that, oh, yeah, another I thing why I don't care for, like the when you're running around and you have to backpedal, I don't... It, it's more Gears of War than Division. I felt in Division it's more escapable. And right. Gears of War, you're this giant moron that's kind of just slogging around. <laughs> I, think, yeah. I think that is dependent on your world tier. Which, I yeah. never changed mine, so I was playing 6 for... I don't know. I yeah, I'm still if you're on, on 6 tracks. and 7, the game is like kind yeah, of annoying honestly like it's yeah it'll, whole, it'll it's just a, slaughter you yeah it's an intense like struggle to get through stuff if you're sitting on yep. six and seven and you aren't like super optimally geared out like, yeah well if you're doing it solo too it's a completely different game yep. yeah yeah that's, this is yep. something uh that i brought up with almost every single person i played with here uh it's really bizarre that when you're playing solo you don't get a free revive but you do when you're playing in multiplayer mm. yep right yeah. That's a little obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, it makes absolutely no sense. I don't think it took me more than three or four on most of these. Like, obviously, we'll get to it later, but fucking flamethrower guys. Obviously, I hate that captain the most. Yeah. Mm. Yep. <clears throat> All right. Uh, so uh, you do your tutorial. Yep. 
I remember the game I was really thinking of that it reminds me of the most Remnant. Yeah. From yeah. the Ashes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's, a lot, that's a lot of dodge one. rolling going on. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so you do your uh, little thing with Yakov, you do your shooting tutorial, and then you go and find Shira. And uh, Shira is like a tech lady, I guess. I, I don't remember what her position is. But uh, I do remember that she cracked some joke about uh, posting uh the photo that she takes with you on the internet and i was like uh, i think you make that joke uh, yeah but you know what i mean <laughs> i was like that's is that funny do we, do we enjoy that because there's no internet there yet eh. but then she reassures you that it's it, they're getting it up yeah yeah mm -hmm. they, that was actually one of like the cool little <laughs> things uh that obviously didn't come to pass but that they mentioned is that they backed up the entire internet on like something on the ship like their entire earth's internet is on the ship somehow and they're I feel like that's a waste of months. waste of database space. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> a lot. I would just let us have to restart. Yeah, let's restart the internet. The internet. <laughs> like, I disagree. I would memes. love the Outriders to be listening to episodes of the Spelunkers as they're traveling <laughs> through space. <laughs> yeah, they should have just had Wikipedia, and that's it. So, do, never mm, talk about yeah. Twitter again. Delete all <laughs> accounts of Twitter and Reddit. Yeah, I agree. Uh, so while you're talking to Shira, there is interference with a probe. And uh, you are sent to go investigate it. And this is when you see some of the first wildlife within Enoch. And you see that crazy hyena looking cow thing. Mm. Uh, I thought that was really interesting. Just uh, the wildlife from the jump and, and how it looked. It, it made me excited for what we were going to run into going further into the game. It's a rat bear. That's, what That's I right. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, so you make your way to the probe. And once you make your way to the probe, you realize that the probe was actually fine. But there was actually a, a second signal that was causing interference with, with the probe. And you are sent to go investigate it, but Tanner is starting to worry, and he wants to kind of pull everybody out. And he doesn't want everybody to drop off of the other ship because he's not feeling good about this area. He he's has all these, like, doubts about what's going on. And uh, this is when we start to realize that uh, Maxwell, this guy who's in charge of this uh, team, is a, is a dick. He's a huge dick, and he wants to continue. And he pushes you to go and uh, check out this interfering signal that is coming from the forest so uh you go into the forest and uh this beautiful little hyena cow that you see roaming across the land is in front of you and uh you have to fight it because it's getting upset from what's going to be happening here because you're colonists and that's what you do that's right <laughs> you kill those rat bears and so you have to fight this uh hyena cow thing and it was cool i mean it was a nice little introduction to the dodge mechanic mm. but uh overall underwhelming i guess um, yeah, but it's, this part, it's plotting. It's yeah. slow moving, for sure. But it, it's basically like this This thing is upset. Something in the environment is causing this thing distress. And you quickly find out what that is because as you slowly investigate this interfering signal, you realize that rocks are starting to float around you. This black goo is kind of seeping through the ground and attaching itself to all the different people who are in this party that are investigating everything and getting into their mouths and making them sick and stuff and then out of nowhere a giant wave of energy comes crashing through and you have this incredible cut scene of everybody like kind of running from this cloud of energy that's going through the forest and some people are getting evaporated some people are like slowly disintegrating um one of the outriders that is with you is like mm -hmm. slowly, like pulled up into the energy field and it's like slowly disintegrating yeah. and asking like, you for help. grab their hand yeah and i love that kind of stuff like when seeing yeah. somebody like dematerialize is always fascinating <laughs> yeah you know he sits there on infinity war and just keeps rewinding the part where spider-man <laughs> <laughs> that's my favorite when he's like mr stark i don't feel so good that's my like, favorite i do i feel great <laughs> <laughs> you don't feel so good tom holland me either <laughs> but yeah like the re you mentioned that in the reaction that your character has is so bad yeah. just like oh yeah no, it's, it's just, just a really cheese. comically bad it's like what the hell is that yeah and then, I, uh, I don't know if so, it's what they're going for but like viewed as a campy like cheesy sci-fi channel kind of story i really mm -hmm. enjoy it if oh, you totally. try to take it seriously oh, it's, it's totally uh, what weird they're going bad. for because i mean you okay. just look at the gears series in general which that was like kind of one of their first games is working on judgment which is based off of baird and i think cole comes into it i never officially finished it but those are the two campiest like most whatever characters in the series mm -hmm. and then bullet storm is just a full-blown like 
camp fest like funny what the hell is going on and yeah. then this one it feels like they're trying to meet a middle maybe sort of but more so be towards the campy so yeah i think that i would rather that they went full bullet storm the right. way that they're oh, writing this <laughs> The uh, way that it just kind of, it's kind of like, that's I why like, a lot of the story, I'm just kind of like, I, I could like skip it. I don't right think it would matter. Storm, to be honest, I, there's I, t- I saw that, I because I totally forgot that they made Bulletstorm until I saw <laughs> it online. Somebody posted something on Twitter about it, and I reacted to it. But it's like, of course, like, yes, this is like Bulletstorm. Of course yeah. it is. Like, it, it it's just, sense. it's toned down a little bit compared to Bulletstorm. Yeah, Bullet oh, it's Storm. toned down for Bullet sure. Bulletstorm is amazing, in my opinion, personally. I, I could not stand Bulletstorm after, like, as far as, like, the dialogue and writing and all that stuff after about the first oh. hour. It was yeah, just like, like that's I, uh. probably not the best. I'm more so talking about the combat and stuff, which yeah. oh, for sure. has the combat and the gameplay yeah. loops that work really well. So Bulletstorm it's... feels incredible to play. Yeah. But yeah, if it were as far as tone, if it were uh, like on the same level as Bulletstorm, I would probably have uh, constantly just have it muted. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, so this wave of energy kind of washes over you, and you get hit with it, but nothing really seems to happen to you. Um, you kind of regroup with the camp and the, the rest of the survivors, and you're all bunching up. And uh, Tanner starts to go off on Maxwell about getting all these people who are infected with this black goo to the med bay. Um, because they're like starting to get sick and you can tell something is extremely wrong with the situation and then maxwell just fucking shoots tanner in the face immediately yeah. mm-hmm. and like, then he, he tries to... i was yeah. like what the fuck is going on yeah. like why would you what because he's a really shitty cartoon cu- cardboard cut out of a villain yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I really I thought he was going to be like a significant character. So, like Tom and I, we played the demo together, so we kind of already saw that. Uh, but the first time I saw it, I mean, that was shocking because I thought he was like, "Oh, this is like going to be your mentor this entire time." It escalates very quickly, very yeah. quickly, and then and then he tells uh, the people that are with him to kill the rest of the insubordinates that are you know on Tanner's side because he kind of wants to hide the evidence of what's going mm-hmm. on here. He doesn't want. The people on the ships to know that like Enoch is not really this place that they thought it was. Because he's corporate and it's all resting on his shoulders. Yeah. It's like uh, that's it's right. so bizarre. Yeah. And like a, the I don't know <laughs> I don't know how they built this operation where everything comes down to like this one guy. Because even when he's dead, they like can't cancel the people coming down to the planet mm-hmm. and shit. It's like you guys didn't think this through very well. I know your planet was dying, but come on. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it, it makes no sense. But even with like the shooting of Tanner, it seems like it comes very thematic and like they just literally what you do a mission with one person and somebody dies. Yep. Like, you get introduced to somebody. Oh, let's fucking that kill happens him. Happens you can't like times. attach to anybody. Yeah. Like you're that like, okay, this so is great. Times. We're gonna put a character in. You're gonna kind of start to like him. We're just gonna fucking kill him then. Yep. <laughs> it's definitely weird in general because like they get to that point like the the whole prologue feels very slow and it's trotting along to introducing stuff and everything and then tanner just gets shot out of nowhere and then the story points from then on are just like going so fast and they're like going to be trying to have you piece stuff together as you're playing the game and it's like to be honest i kind of love that I love I mean, how it, it gets like, like super it slow, general. and then it's just like a hundred immediately. It's a little yeah. bit whiplashy for sure. Yeah, right. It's <laughs> like just—it's a little bit weird to me. Like I do like it better that way, but it's weird to go with the slow introduction, and then suddenly it's like dead, trying dead, to figure dead, out dead. what the fuck's going on. Yeah, like yeah. it's just very weird. That's not what I expected, but yeah, I exactly. was kind of there for it. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> So uh, you have to make your way through this uh, wave of enemies, making your way to Maxwell, and eventually you find Maxwell and you shoot him in the face. And I don't remember how this happens, but you end up getting put back into cryo. Because you get shot, right? Or no, is it either get shot or you get uh, wounded. And yeah. so um, uh, Some, Shira, yeah. Shira guides you, like is escorting you, like you're wrapped over her shoulder and she's guiding like, we'll put you in here, we'll take care of you. We just got to, you know, deal with triage and all this yep. stuff and then the character right. does get shocked by the storm at some point right like in the forest right yeah, yeah. yeah. in the forest you get hit and then right before tanner is shot in the face you kind of have the surge of energy yeah pass exactly. over you and you kind of like set a handrail on fire which makes right. it seem like you should be a pyromancer but whatever it's just really unstable man you got a lot of energy yeah. going on right, i guess gotta so. get out somehow um <laughs> so you get put into cryo sleep but uh, you are very quickly woken up 
Well, well, well quickly. Quick, 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 in, quick, in our quick, perspective, quick, yeah. In our perspective, very quickly. <laughs> um, and you get woken up by uh, uh, this uh, hooded lady and a, a nice gentleman, and they kind of just kind of leave you. Yeah. Then, and they, and they, but then you immediately get taken by a bunch of assholes. And then who, it's uh, Skyrim. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I didn't Basically. even put that together. That's hilarious. <laughs> yeah, it totally is. And then, you, and then you have this very Skyrim esque uh, situation happen with these people who we learn are the insurgents, and uh, since you are an outrider, they find out as you're on this truck that is somehow a big ass ordeal. But we have no idea why, because it's a proper noun. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> but I actually love this part where you're driving through the war zone. And you just see all this like crazy devastation just happening around you, mm -hmm. and then you like get to this gate, and they like try to let you in, and this guy's like, "I will help you, like let me through," and he just the insurgent just comes up and just stabs him under the chin. It's like, whoa, we're still yeah. kicking it up here. <laughs> it's right. Okay, which uh, I can appreciate the thirty whatever year jump. I think it's thirty one or some nonsense. If they were to give us some kind of civilization type game that is the com the the whole like a prologue to the 31 years later that mm. plays out like civilization the them trying to build up the world mm. and all this stuff and dealing with a campaign that way otherwise like i'm not a fan of them being like oh try to piece together what's happened these past well 31 if you years. there are like, optional dialogue options that you yeah and i've done and you'll piece quite a lot together. of them but it's yeah. like I'm not a fan of that kind of storytelling. That's like one of my biggest annoyances with like Breath of the Wild and stuff like that. Is it's just like you woke mm. up, something happened. And I am on the exact opposite spectrum of that. I hate I it. I'm not a fan that. of that sort of storytelling at all. So, yeah. but yeah, I see where you're coming from. But I also like. I kind of like it. I I appreciate. I I yeah. I, I get your perspective on that. For me, it it allows for a lot of like a wide swath of lore and world building, which yep. I'm here for. It doesn't mean it always pays off well in in good ways, and you know that's the impetus right. is on like the writers to deliver some cool, interesting nuggets. But I like. I like how much whiplash this game gives you from the get-go. It's like, all right, you're in cryo. Wake up. World's hell. All right, this dude gets stabbed. Everything's gone to hell. And like it, it's at least fun and adds to uh, like it, it kind of I feel like it makes up for how plotting the the pacing was from like the first half of that prologue. Yeah, right. It goes into like okay now we're just going all the way through it. And he, right. and here's why it works so well with that situation mm. is is because like with the the prologue and how slow it is, and then that kick into the story and how it's just like okay dead dead cryo wake up all hell's breaking loose then it's then it's up to you as the player to be like what the hell happened within this moment in time and those little nuggets that you get along the way are always so interesting to me i that's like one of my favorite things in games is finding out okay why is this world the way it is yeah what I, made I, this like that mm -hmm. i certainly like getting dropped in with little context and figuring it out along the way uh we've mentioned that before on the show but I, it is maybe a little droll that it all comes through, okay, let me just select each conversation option down totally. the list with every person I meet. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, yeah. That, that, that's, that. like, where my biggest issue is usually is, like, that sort of thing, where it's clicking, just get to this point, oh, here's maybe a little bit of exposition, now get to the next point. Like. Yeah, they're trying to, like... you know, like, have their cake and eat it too, yeah, kind of. Like, they have all that it. lore for everybody, but they also mm -hmm. want people who don't give a shit and just want to shoot things yeah. to be able to just skip it all. Bypass it, yeah. Which yeah. is and, nice. Yeah. I mean, because really, it is the best of both worlds in that situation, where, like, if you go into the lore and you dive into all the different characters, and because you can, mm -hmm. that option's there, and there is a lot of writing for all of these characters. Every character that is introduced has all these lore sections that are paragraphs long. So if you want that, it's there. But if you don't, you know, and you can just jump through, then you can enjoy the combat. You can yeah. enjoy the thrill of just looting and shooting, which I think is nice for everybody who is trying to get into this game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, mean, I suppose it's the happiest medium you're going to find yeah, between yeah. the two. Yeah, I, mean, I want to get into the story, but literally the way it's set up, I don't care. Yeah, like, that's fair. Just the way it went, and I want to know, and I literally... 
before we started, I was trying to read some of the lore. I made it through the Earth one, literally like the first one in lore, and I fucking fell asleep on my bed. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm not fucking reading all these. It's gonna take I forever. I looked up that page for a moment, and I was like about to start reading on one of the characters or something. I was just like, I just really don't care right now. Like, maybe once you're actually done with the game, you'll want to pick up on the extra little pieces, but like. As of right now, where we're at, I'm not finding myself caring about picking up the little pieces. Yeah, like, it yeah. kind of reminds me of a uh, Final Fantasy 13, which you know everybody says the story in that game doesn't make sense, and it kind of doesn't unless you read like a million logs that they put in your little journal. Similar with like Destiny. Oh yeah, I yeah. think I think that's yeah. definitely what they were trying to go for and achieving. Like, there that is one of the things to the credit of Destiny is. A lot of the times the story is not up in your face and really worthwhile paying attention, but you start diving into those lore nuggets, like especially with Destiny 1 and The Taken King and uh, The Book of Sorrows, some of the best sci-fi writing out there. Uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's fantastic. But yeah, again, it's not, not you're being asked to dive into another world full of proper nouns and timelines while also trying to play a game that is having constant server disconnect issues yep. and like just trying to get to the act of playing the game is an exhausting endeavor in and of itself. Yeah. So like yeah. trying to sit down and like, all right, now I want to read three paragraphs. Let's go server disconnect. Right. Uh, okay. I'm done. <laughs> I'm I done. only log in to read three paragraphs. Of <laughs> <laughs> uh, did anybody dig into those very much at all? I kept saying I that yet. I needed to, but no, I have not I'm yet. With you. And I, that's what I want to say is I'm very hot on this game, but I don't give a fuck about the story, even in the slightest iota at all. It is irrelevant yeah. to me as far as like the lore that is within those paragraphs. If I can get it from those optional conversations or the main like quests that I'm doing in those cutscenes, great. The overall narrative that is going on behind the scenes and everybody's background, it's so not relevant to me and my enjoyment yeah. of this game. But yeah. I love that it's there. Yeah, mm -hmm. totally. And uh, on that, it, it, part of it also comes down to the timing for me as well, is because I'm simultaneously playing through Disco Elysium. Yep, uh, again, same here. On the, <laughs> I played a bit when it came out, playing through more now, I'm finishing uh, through a Final Cut release. But I bring that up because that game is all about reading. text. Yeah, it's all that about reading text blocks everywhere. And so trying, it's like picking and choosing my battles for the time I'm going to invest in reading and trying to get into another world it's like uh disco elysium's incredible and i would much rather sit and just read shit there as opposed to here where like i just want to get to my verbs yep right yeah <laughs> i i i kind of like the story in this game actually i don't it's not i'm not coming to this game for the story this isn't a uh a, a last of us or a ghost of tsushima or a, a god of war and it's it's story sense but this is it's like a solid like borderlands esque story for i uh, am the... intrigued by the general story too. yeah yeah, yeah. I, but there it's is a half of the story that i am interested in and is the altered war which we will get into as yeah. we progress through the story mm -hmm. i think is incredibly interesting the insurgency that's happening i don't give a fuck about yeah it because I that, about... that is honestly just cannon fodder that, that's yeah. all that is so yeah. but, but we can move on uh and progress through but there was something that ryan and i were talking about when we got to a particular cutscene that'll come up later you know that you mentioned altered and that's what sparked my my memory is uh there's a particular altered you encounter at one point and stubs and i were kind of just sitting laughing a little bit and we're like i was thinking about i was like you know this game feels like as far as its narrative goes it feels like a euro sci-fi anime melodrama yeah. And it's aware of it. Oh, you're and speaking my language, baby. So <laughs> cheesy and over the top in some respects, but like it, it to me, it feels like a really, it, a very much a B movie, <laughs> B action movie with right. the melodrama and che uh, cheese and everything. It was like, I can get behind this. Like it's fun. It's popcorny. Right. There is definitely some um, Starship Trooper vibes. Yeah, <laughs> mm -hmm. hardcore. Yeah, and that's not a bad thing. At no, all. not at all. Yeah, I, uh, it does sound like this, like from listening to podcasts, specifically Liana talking on the GI show, it sounds like the story gets better later, which I would expect and hope. Uh, so I'm hoping it like it becomes more interesting than just the concept being interesting. Yeah. The game in general seems to, um, I know we're, we're just about caught up with where the demo goes to a little bit, um, 
where it ends, but it feels like the game really starts to kick into gear just past where the demo ends. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Sure. It was a and weird that's... cutoff for the demo. For yeah. Sure. <laughs> well, I mean, because you go like two missions later and you're fighting actual creatures and stuff and you're like, oh, cool. Maybe it's actually going to get variety now. Part, part of that, I think, is because of the fact that, that this game got delayed by about a month and a half. Yeah. Month month plus. Uh, Didn't it get and delayed twice? I thought it got delayed twice. It, it got was delayed like part way through twenty twenty originally, I think. Yeah, the the original goal was for it to release release in twenty twenty and then they finally gave it a February twenty sixth yeah. release date and then yeah. right like I think it was end of January, like, all right, we need a little bit more time. So they delayed it to April first and then they like but like in the same breath as that delay, they're like, We have a demo for you which yeah. I think was still a cool move and considering oh, yeah, like they're sure. still focusing so many so much effort on getting that game finished that they still had like it wasn't like a vertical slice necessarily it felt more like the leaning tower of pisa at how stable it was but at the very least they gave people like a bit to play through to kind of get a feel for it but yeah it feels like this seems like a good hot cut spot to just this is the game this is where you get some of the combat we'll go from there Yep. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, once the demo, once you get past that point, it to me at least, it's really started to come online. All right. So let's get back into it. So uh, well, you're still in the truck, and you get taken mm -hmm. to the no man's land, and this is where you get to finally choose your class. So uh, for this main chunk, what is your main class that everybody is going with, Chris? Uh, I don't know that I have a main because I played them all the level 14. Okay, we're going to skip you, Ryan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, He's meeting everything. Chris, Chris, what, what, just give us some. On. The one he was going to play with us in the group of three was the Pyromancer, yeah. right? But yeah, but and... uh, crossplay wasn't working. So I, Pyro was actually the last one I ended up leveling because me and Genetics just started brand new Trickster mm -hmm. and Pyromancer so that we could check those out. So right. let's go Pyromancer, because I think I might be the only one here who's played a lot of that. Hmm. I've played a bit, but I'll get to it, yeah. Right. Uh, Technomancer? That's that's right. Tom? I only have time to play one uh, Devastator. Devastator's good. Genetics, what, you, what have you been playing? I'm playing Trickster mostly. Like, there's three of them on my character select screen, so... I started one initially as solo, and then I played the one with Chris on the um, whatever, and then I did farm on the demo excessively. I have like three legendaries or some shit, but that one's for the trio that we're going to play at some point, so since crossplay is finally working. It is I working. We, play... we found that out today. It is yeah, working great. And I just wanted to play Trickster. Like Trickster and Devastator are the main ones that are making the combat click for me a lot right now. So. Yeah, Trickster's it, great. And Rob? Technomancer as well. Yeah, uh, I'm maining a trickster. That is the one I will probably finish the game with. I did start a Devastator play today, obviously with uh, Ryan and Rob, and that was a blast. But yeah, two Devastators and a trickster. <laughs> I just, so I, little little anecdote. I've mainly been playing with Chris. Chris has done most of this run with me. And we were doing double tricksters, going through everything, and it was just <laughs> fucking devastation. It was so stupid and fun, and it, we broke the game so many times, and it felt <laughs> so good every time. It's funny you bring that up, Ryan and I, uh, because of the crossplay issues, we're the only two people playing on PC, and so we didn't even have cross console play. So it was like, I guess, I guess we're playing together. Cool, let's do this. And we both wanted to play Technomancer. And so we start going through, and Brian's like, well, I like to get up in their face a little bit. So he starts playing more of a tank style, and I'm much more of a sniper. And we, it, the game totally still allowed for that in some fucking broken ways. Because oh, yeah. the first boss we got to, we got him so stunlocked, he used one ability, and then we got him in a corner and just back to 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 back dead. Yep. It was amazing. <laughs> so bad. Like, 80% yeah. of his health bar, he was just, like, trying to paw at a turret that he couldn't <laughs> quite hit because <laughs> it was in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> there was and a handful of sections down. where Chris and I, we ran through it. it. It was just a wave of enemies, and we just mm -hmm. ran through it within, like, a minute. It, yep. it took no time, and it was probably, what, 20 people? 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Because it, it scales up pretty dramatically how many enemies there are when you're playing yeah. uh, two or three. And when you have two people that can freeze everyone, <laughs> it's yeah. stupid. Yeah, yeah that's what was I was incredible. telling, talking to Chris about the other day. I was like, the fucking trickster's more of a support class than the fucking technomancer. It's well, a techno also awesome for reasons. You throw out the stupid bubble to revive people. You're not taking damage. They're not taking damage. Like, it's so you. That's the thing is what the, I, I made mention of it earlier, and I, that's kind of what I was alluding to with playing with Ryan. Is like we have wildly different play styles right but in the same class like i can be a support and he can be a tank exactly and yeah. like we can like just based on the weapon mods that we have and the active abilities i can be a support class he can be a tank right. on a class that you would would anticipate just being support healer because like all the classes too have mods that are mm -hmm. like oh when you do this much damage with earthquake or whatever else heal your allies for exactly this much. and then there's mm -hmm. ones that give you more damage more cooldown more utility so there's like a whole bunch of build customization you can do to fit yeah. your own play styles and stuff. I love what's it. nice about that too since we're getting into that already and just how deep like that goes is that you can fix that on the fly yep mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that's combat. what that's makes it so incredible mm -hmm. yeah. is chris and i we were getting our asses kicked and we were just like hey let's respec real quick we'll change up our tactics and then the next thing you know we were fucking running through the rest yeah. of the game yeah. and it felt so <laughs> good it yeah like, that like that particular moment really stood out of like we we cannot win this fight but then we just change our builds up like we yep. can change all our skill points, we can change all our weapon mods, or and free. then we kick ass. Yep. And it was just like a quick communication, like, "Hey, what are you gonna pick? <laughs> I'm gonna pick this. What are your mods? I have this." Mm -hmm. And then, next thing you know, we. I mean, that is my favorite thing in video games. Like, yeah. I, I have yeah. never had more fun, probably, in like the last year than I had in those moments than I, that exactly. I had this past week with Chris running through that because that, those are like my favorite things. It's like yeah. leveling up, getting these abilities, being able to showcase your powers in a way right. that fits the way that you want to play the game and like gives you the agency to take control of the combat situation felt so incredibly good. Yeah. I cannot describe that. It's satisfying way. for sure. It right. just like, yeah. I can, at any moment, I'm never penalized for wanting to try something. The game exactly. is constantly encouraging me to play with its systems yeah. uh, at any opportunity. Like middle of a firefight, you can change your abilities out. No problem. Yeah. Love it. The only other thing I can compare it to is our Wasted and Wasteland streams, which you should watch every Saturday. <laughs> 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 uh, so you make your way through No Man's Land and you run into Lord Seth for the first time, who is another altered. Um, and people seem to be kind of afraid of him, but they kind of respect him at the same time. And I didn't really understand that vibe that we were getting from the jump. Um, the guy that was kind of standing there that was telling you about Lord Seth seemed like he was like in awe of him. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, so it's hard to determine what's really going on there. But uh, eventually you make your way through this combat zone and you run into Shira again. But she's old. And she's missing an eye, and she kind of looks like Solid Snake in a way. <laughs> she is cantankerous as hell. Yeah, and she is now the Grand Marshal of Rift Town, whereas before she was like... I don't like, like her personally. I find her I... so fucking annoying. It's just like the epitome of like, oh, everybody's arguing for strong female characters. How can we do this? And she doesn't have personality to me. She's just angry all the fucking time. It's like... I don't like her at all. I, see, I think it was interesting because it was such a drastic character foil from the little girl that you met at the start of the prologue who was doing and that's, these. Yeah, but that gets into my issue and with the 31-year like, jump thing. I yeah. don't like to just jump and, like, you can introduce the characters that, but I don't like to see them one way, and then you jump ahead, and they're, like, totally freaking different or whatever. And I'm like, what happened here? I need to know what yeah. the exact process was and like maybe that gets more clear as you go through the game but like for the point we stop i'm not getting that for any of the characters and what's changed for them so and I, yeah I, I totally i get where you're coming from on that i similar to tyler like i enjoy that kind of stuff because it, it's a nice contrast of to me it serves as a a foundation for sh the world turned to shit 
and even someone that you remember as being like a timid but sweet and caring empathetic person is like the most hardened gruff person yeah. like what happened and but that's the thing is like i don't ask that question um annoyed i asked that question like oh i'm curious like they're they're right. building towards something i'm curious what that is but right. I, I get your perspective on like i give me give me more to go on to start yeah, it, it is know. what has this world done to this girl to right. turn her into this thing right i mean i do get that side of it too but like for sure some of my biggest like things that i like for character development and stuff is like stuff like when you look at the mcu and stuff like that and you look at Tony Stark in Iron Man 1 and you see him change as a character throughout the whole thing it's not suddenly you watch that then but like if I were to watch that and then go watch Endgame or something I'd be like well right you, yeah but that's time happened? you get an arc like, on your side yeah for sure yeah like I like an arc basically totally like, I, 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 I get that Wait, I mean, and that's the things that, that video games still struggle with right is mm -hmm. we're never going to have that arc of time to completely fulfill that request of what this person is truly going through, what that person is feeling. There's, right. I don't think there's ever been a game that has truly grabbed that and brought it to fruition. You know what I mean? And that's just because of pacing and time, and you're trying to get gameplay in there as well. It's not the same thing. I would argue Arthur Morgan in Red Dead 2 does that. That game is yeah. far too long, but it uses that time. But also, like, Red Dead 2 right before and then leading into red dead one the story of um john john yeah, yeah that that's fantastic okay story. so john in that aspect i guess you're right yeah so correct me and say john. well I mean, fair though like you do make a good point though and like games typically don't have that type of the luxury that something like the mcu said because that's kind of the first i mean i know it's just an example the MCU, no it's, it's totally an anomaly though yeah for sure this storytelling structure that you have you know, 2008, the first Iron Man comes out, and then, you know, 2019, Endgame comes out. You know, you have 11 years of time to tell the story of right, person, right, and all totally. these things and hazards that they've gone through and how that's broken their character and rebuilt it, whereas, like, us playing the game, we are controlling someone who is not even that character mm. and trying to figure out what that character is going through. Speaking you know, about anomalies... That's right. <laughs> uh, you're talking to Shira, and genetics doesn't like her, but she's okay. She's like Solid Snake, and she's like, hey, we need to figure out what's going on with Jakob. He was captured. Let's go get him. We're going to bring him back. So now we're on a mission to go bring Jakob back. And uh, this mission is uh, pointless, kind of. It's just basically uh, just uh, sending you into an area to shoot some people and have a conversation and make some jokes. That yeah. mission, though... Isn't that all out, the missions? Like, yep. it, it, yeah, I mean, that's all the missions. Yep. But yes. <laughs> the mission immediately shows you that the level design of the game is lacking because they drop you in and you already have, like, five fucking people shooting you that's out of like, nowhere. Yeah, it's like the only time that that specifically happens where you load through a door and you're, like, under fire immediately. Right. It doesn't happen a whole bunch, but as a whole, the level design is one of the parts for me that's a little lacking because it's just go to area it looks very much like just cover ba very basic gears of war style which i would even say i don't like the even though i like gears of war i don't like the level design of it a lot of the time because it's just so basic tunnels but basically. like yeah the fact that you spawn in that room and people are shooting you and you end up at half health granted it's pretty easy on you're not that stressed about it but it's like to spawn in the room and your screen's immediately flashing red it's like what the fuck is even happening right now i don't get where you fucked up and did that why yeah it just doesn't make sense to me it, what's weird is this is where you don't notice it at first but this is where you get that instance of oh okay this game is actually broken up into like these tiny little battlegrounds yeah mm -hmm. and this is what the rest of the game is most likely going to be it's not a it's not an open world you're not traveling through like this giant map it is like these segmented little battles throughout this zone that you have to have a cutscene to go into to yeah. jump across a bridge yeah, yeah. <laughs> Those I know the, are still it funny. fades to black you jump across the bridge <laughs> it fades to black and then you're in the moment like yeah. what is that That's i will i will <laughs> yeah i will say i do appreciate that they the the developer we've talked about how we appreciate how communicative they are with the community they even addressed that as like a great people had like 
we get it. It kind of sucks. There's not really anything we can do based on how we have these servers set up. It's just kind of the nature of like aligning queues. Yep. Yeah, it's not a great. It's not great. I figured but that's it, what it was. Was yeah. like trying to get all the various load times of people and stuff Basically. that will happen to like line up so that the map is playing out. Yeah, it's like everybody. cross play instancing. Um, Anyways, we get Yaka, and uh, this is one of the things I actually like about the game, is once you get done with a little mission, you can travel back mm. to the hideout, and you get that little fast travel icon that pops up, which is nice. You know, you don't have to walk back to the front of the, like, battleground, basically, and walk all the way back to the map. Even though the uh, travel system's kind of just janky for parties, honestly. Like, uh, 100% great. janky. Yeah. It's you not know. great. I also don't like, like that the okay. world doesn't repopulate. <laughs> Unless you like shut down. Gotta, yeah, I agree. I, it does feel weird if you start and you want to like backtrack and run all the way through. It's just. Or after you do like the main m m quest you were going yep. to, and then you're like, oh, I got a side quest, and you're just running through fucking desolate there's land. No there. yeah. Oh, there's yeah. a door here now, finally. Hold on. But, Hold but, on. Cutscene. Let me open the door. But they do <laughs> kind of supplement that, right, with having the little uh, icons throughout that you can fast travel to within the middle totally. of that map. Yeah, and so you, you can don't have to run through the entire thing. You know, sure. you can pick and choose where you want to drop. And you can repeat missions. Yeah, which yeah, I appreciate. Which, which we will get into in about five seconds. Yeah. So, well, uh, well. <laughs> also, when you leave, like, um, when you leave an entire area, like if you leave First City and go back to Rift Town, but then come back to First City, the enemies do repopulate. Then they do. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yep. Cool. I didn't realize that. All right. So you get Yaka back, and you, you and Yaka have been sure you're all talking, and you finally learn about the storm, or as they call it, the anomaly. The anomaly. And um, how nobody really understands what the fuck it is, or how it works, or why it does what it does. Um, but then you help uh, Shira and Yaka by going to the solar array to help get supplies for the troops, because they're being pinned down by the insurgents and this new altered, who we will learn is gauss so we got to do that mission but before that we're going to do the first side mission we all know it we all love it mr chang uh, we, we got to talk about this oh uh, yeah this is the time to talk about this it's uh, not great yeah, this it's is weird definitely questionable in my opinion honestly i'd say problematic problematic <laughs> it's bad yeah like the, so prefacing it you go to like a, a like a prison bar gate thing but where you're told like you can go talk with someone you meet Mr. Chang and you start having a dialogue with Mr. Chang where it is full of like really gross cliche Asian stereotype Asian yeah. stereotype like yeah, Chinese about, mysticism yeah, shit. Getting, is, the tea is involved for no reason yeah, and then is immediate. He's immediately killed, um, and that's like one. That's like the only Asian <laughs> representation you've seen from the get go, unless you make your character in that direction. But like, it's it's definitely not what they were going for in any respect. But the timing is not great, right? Considering, considering, mm -hmm. not great. No, no, right. It's pretty bad, um, and. Yeah, it was uh, pretty grossed out when I saw that. And actually, part of what grossed me out even more was uh, we have a friend, uh, Nick, uh, who may address this during when the demo first came out and posted on the Reddit, like, hey, this is an issue for uh, Nick. Nick is uh, Asian American and pointed this out like this is kind of disgusting. Like part of me is just happy you killed off Mr. Chang as quickly as you did because I didn't want to have to keep enduring that shit. Uh, and having to see how you're representing this character, and then the responses were disgusting. They, like he posted about it, and it it made me pissed off, just that people were being as vitriolic and hateful and mean. And don't word to the wise, don't be an that asshole. Person. Don't be, be that like, person, please. Yeah. I can see part of why they went about it the way they did because they're trying to talk. They're trying. They're hitting more on the point that you're making about Shira being timid and nice, and then all of a sudden she's a war-hardened criminal or whatever the heck you want to call her. Mm. They have this nice, like, that's probably like the number one stereotype where you're like, who's going to be mean to that? You know, as like nice old Asian person inviting you in or whatever, and then all of a sudden they're shot and killed. And like the the 
later one of the later side missions does set up something for your character as far as, far as dialogue goes in, in regards to him and chris saw it too because it's like extended from the demo but mm. as a whole it's just not done well at all like no i don't they they didn't need to do that like i don't know why they my did thing it. is with it is you know uh earth has been destroyed mm-hmm. right we have made it through space and time at this point um we are on a new planet why is there one asian character from the beginning of this game who is like hey come in here and sit down and we'll have a tea we'll have use a it tea. like right yeah like why did that it stereotype that, transcend that, yep. planetary yeah, travel he's, he's just this old asian man who is like very and it sucks but it's like very stereotypical you think of an old asian man that is a hundred percent that character right mm-hmm and, you know, and he does the typical thing of like, oh, we're going to have tea and have a conversation. Very and the cool. honorage, honorifics that he uses. Exactly. And yeah. yep. It's yeah, like but... just very bad in general. The like, way that I... he speaks is, I don't know. you know, how did that transcend from Earth 83 years into this new planet? And that's that is still who he is, even though 31 years have passed since all of this war and suffrage has broken out. Yeah. It, it makes doesn't no make sense. sense very much. It makes yeah, no sense. It, it, it seems like an opportunity they could have taken to not per, like propagate really dumb, shitty stereotypes. Like, this game a lot of times feels like Big Trouble in Little China. Yeah. Like, including some of those really shitty stereotypes. Right. But, yeah, like, it, it, but, it was a black spot or a blind spot on this. Uh, but what makes it worse is we brought this up earlier is that you can replay missions. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> If you replay the side quest, Mr. Chang gets shot in the face like within a minute. Yeah. And then if you replay it, he's still alive and still doing the same stereotypical shit. And then you just watch this Asian it's, man get shot in the face weird. all over again. It's reinforcing the, the yeah. thought process or the whatever bit, you want yeah. to call it. Like it's yeah. reinforcing it, which is just not good in and of itself too. But like as a whole, I I barely replayed side quests. I would just reload the story point and replay through all the main quests during the demo. So yeah. I don't know. It's just gross. Yeah, not a good time. Yeah, uh, but while we're on side quests, I do like that the side quests are repeatable because it's very easy to like be playing the story with something. Also, the fact that you can set the story point backwards. Mm-hmm. And yes. then just replay again. Like, it's easy to be playing with other people and keep yourself at a certain story point, but still be able to, like, grind and do whatever you want on your character and your profile. Yeah. Which is a uh, very reminiscent like, of Remnant, so I love that. Yeah, like, the, the, the world tier stuff in particular, I really appreciate. And, like, you can set it dif- difficulty indiv- on an individual basis. That's great. It's a great quality of life decision. Uh, so, uh, Mr. Chang is being uh, gunned down by the Hound Gang who is led by this asshole named Barker. So, uh, I'm so sorry, real quick. This is a little bit behind, but when we, one of the things that I remember when we wake up out of cryo, you get out of the cryo tube, and then you look to your right, there's just spray painting saying, fuck you, on the <laughs> wall. And then you go through, and then there's just Barker, the Hound Gang, wolf, 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 wolf. It's like, oh my god, this is fucking terrible right it's silly it's so bad anyway sorry no we needed that fuck you interjection right there. It was, it's so it was good. Good. uh but the the hound gang this is basically just an excuse to go into an arena and shoot people mm-hmm. you know the, the hounds it, it is interesting that, that it's like the separate gang that lives at the bottom of riptown and you have to take a separate door to get into their area you know, they are separated from the main population of Rifttown, mm. um, which is weird because they don't really go into it all that much. Maybe it is in, the, like, the little lore chunks, but I didn't yeah. read that shit. So. Part of what's weird, too, though, is, like, you do that, or you do the Yakub mission, I think, which is dealt with that area or something, or one, some gang or something. Yeah. And she's all like, oh, I don't do anything about them because my people like the black market. They don't want to starve. And then you do the side quest and your character for some reason asks her, why don't you do something about them? And she's all like, oh, they're holed up too much for me to la 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 something. I don't want to be fighting two wars. And you're like, but you just told me you keep them there because they black market and like help you feed your people. And now you don't do anything because like it's 
it, it was just weird, like up. dialogue yeah. stuff that didn't add up. I was like, what the heck is this? Yeah, um, and I don't remember, like, I know that Mr. Chang, he had, like, a debt that he owed to the Hound Gang, and that's why they killed him or whatever. Mm -hmm. Then your dude immediately, like, turns around, or lady, whatever you choose, turns around and, like, immediately shoots that person. Yeah. I don't, I don't remember why you go and find Barker like, are you, are you seeking out just to kill Barker? I don't remember. No, you're saving and, the lady that got kidnapped, right? But no, because when you get there, I he's think like, this wasn't a rescue. He was yeah. just there oh. to kill the guy I, Barker. I think you were looking for a lead on gear. The The impression I get was because, like, part of why your character gets pissed off uh, after Mr. Chang gets shot. Not because Mr. Chang got shot. Just because he was going to show me the good stuff. Yeah. Is the quote. Uh, <laughs> and so... My suspicion... nice guy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. My suspicion was, from what I remember, uh, it's been a while since I actually like, s s sat down and played through it properly, but looking for basically a lead on more gear or like a connection yeah. to that type of shit, like the black market, basically, and you just happen to find the person that was helping out Mr. Chang, and like, yeah, you... this wasn't a rescue, yeah, he points it out twice because she brings it up. He's like, again, uh -huh. I wasn't here for you. Yeah. Just so we're clear, I don't care about you. Yeah. You Even though die. there's like this weird, like, lovey dovey yeah, interaction. Yeah. And then so afterwards, weird. they're all like yeah. sitting next to each other. He's like, oh, yeah. Staring long. Oh, you made my day so much better. Yeah. You know, yeah. we're gods. <laughs> we don't have to care. That's right, right. baby. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm not playing. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Back to the main mission. We are going to the Solar Array to fuck up the altar who is murdering everyone and stopping you from getting supplies. His name is Gauss. He's cool. Sure. Go through a bunch of different combat interactions. It's fine. Yep, it's that's it. That's exactly it. It's fine. You know, it's He's fine. a bullet sponge. He's but got then powers. And you go and fight Gauss. And I think Gauss has a cool design. You know, he's like this weird humanoid that has like electricity powers. He yeah, looks dope. I, he and he has all these like spikes jutting out of him and in my head i'm thinking you know this guy's altered how long has he been altered i don't know but why does he have this like crazy misshapen form and i'm over here just a good looking black man got the, the techno well, you were in powers. cryo you know your powers don't get to start coming out because you're in cryo right your body was just is, frozen is that what like... this is though is like these are his powers manifesting well, over time and changing his it... body do you because think it's that, or do you think it's because of uh, further at the end where we end on the alchemist? Mm. Who knows? Yeah, the weird Could experiments. Because be. I, I think, mean, yeah, the Mo... I don't remember oh, his yeah. name. I was about to say Modoc. I don't remember what his name is. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah, he also looked, like, really funky from the little bit you could see of him subject, in the scenes. Subject 6. Well, he's even, got a I mean, but even, even with Seth the shriveled looks man pretty man. weird. You know, Seth has, like, his a, face kind of like a mauled-looking face. Yeah. And just something about his features are alien versus the rest of the population of Riptown thus far. Yeah. Sure. I was just assuming it's because the same reason how Jakob's like, oh, you look so young because you were in cryo for so long. Your body literally doesn't age. Nothing's going on in it. It's just mm. preserved in time at that point in time. Right. So your power is manifested differently because of the way your they cells have were exposed. 30 years. To... Yeah. 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 yeah I wonder if it'll be... Still... I wonder if it'll be a thing like a, you know, if in this or something where a character will look different by the end after using their powers for a Maybe while. Maybe that's why character creation sucks. Who knows? It's like Fable. Stuff. Every right. time you die, Dude, you get a new scar. Awesome, though. You know, um, I like this fight a lot, though, because I, I think it sets up the expectation for how much area of effect damage bosses do. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. it was fun. I mean, it makes you utilize the battlefield. Yeah. Completely. It's a tutorial boss fight, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah it's a, the boss fights are kind of like MMO-ish in the way that it shows like exactly where everything's going to hit and it's just on you to dodge it yeah. and uh, they, they introduced earlier I guess but this is the first time it's really useful the interrupt mechanic certain mm -hmm. abilities have oh, yeah. the ability to interrupt the enemy's abilities which is super important anytime they're trying to use a heal ability because yep. I know I don't remember if I was playing with genetics or Tyler but there was a guy that like healed his entire freaking health bar after we had been shooting him for like yep. two minutes Those captains there, there was at one point in time because like during the demo I tried all the various different farming methods and I was farming because you would just go to the captain die go to the captain die and it, you keep the loot after you kill the captain and 
the captains get random skills. So mm. I would go to the captain, and like if I did not have the DPS to kill them in time, they would cast the stupid Phoenix one or whatever, where oh. they turn into like a little ash ball, and then they yeah. revive with like full health and shit. And you're just like, what Ugh. the hell was that? Like the healing abilities are annoying, which they I said have never in the seen demo. That. It's, I've even, seen it like once or twice. They even toned them down because people were like, these are freaking bull crap. Why is the guy at like a third health and he manages to cast healing light in time and he's full health again. And like wow. several of the interrupt abilities don't exactly have the timing you need to interrupt them when they're doing something like the time blade, I think has to put them into skeleton form before. It well, interrupts. Robin, I noticed earlier today while we were playing that, the earthquake ability with the devastator does not always interrupt a move and uh, yeah i think that's tied to because it points it out when they do the whole mm -hmm. like freeze gameplay tile card um they uh, build up an efficiency bar against it to yeah and they have the that status effect at some point yeah there's a vortex beside their name that shows that they have a, like an increased resistance to it so while right. it's active i think that there is a lower th they have they require a higher threshold of those types of interrupt skills to overcome it, it seems like. But otherwise, yeah. you'll see, like, effect resisted, effect resisted yeah. in combat. But yeah, That's I especially... Oh. Sorry, no, I especially I'm... noticed that with the Technomancer in terms of, like, how yep. the skills, like, to interrupt are really slow. Like, as ro the rocket thing, like, you can't interrupt anybody with that. Their skills are already cast by the time it shoots out the rockets and hits them. Yeah. And I was yeah, just going to say, I, on, in regards to the status effect bar... There is a legendary shotgun, which is a, it has a mod on it that I stopped using because you shoot an enemy and it floats them up in the sky, but then it builds up that status effect bar. So I was get, making captains to where I couldn't interrupt them because I oh, sent them into sucks. the sky too many times. That's so tough. I stopped Weird. using it for that reason. Hmm. I wonder Super if that's weird. something you pull out like toward the end of a fight if you're like trying to lock them down, maybe. Yeah. Like, yeah. Because you, you can every, do that. Everybody too. Like, you shoot them, them, let them go up, switch to your other gun, yeah. then you fall down, you switch, and then shoot them again. And right. It, it does have a loop of sorts, but it doesn't have a brain dead loop, and that's what I want. So. <laughs> Fair. Fair. <laughs> Reasonable. Uh, all I, right. Anyways. I want, I, before we move on, I wanted to ask okay. Ryan. We're never moving on, Tyler. This is a four hour episode. <laughs> Uh, Ryan, the, the, like the key, <laughs> uh, uh, the key and lock that you find a million times through this—is that like a real thing, uh, or is that oh, some made-up crap? It. No, it's a lever. He informed me <laughs> that earlier. Well, he's gonna form the whole damn world on <laughs> this podcast now. Because I was like, "Hey, has anybody got the thing for the door?" And he, it's a lever. <laughs> the handle. The handle's the one that comes off the door, curves down, and has the thumb to press on it. Uh, <laughs> oh, yeah, because you kill all that. That's what you're talking about, how you kill all the enemies in a room. Uh, they're like, go pick up the they key. They keep dropping what it mm. says is a key. Is a, Please. Yeah, explain it to the world, right? Just thread it into a handle. The handle so the thing's just got to be unlocked anyway. They thread the lever into what is essentially just a knob. They could just turn it with their hand like a doorknob. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> no security. The writing in this game sucks. So incompetent. <laughs> That's what? why Tom hates the How would you rate the lock picking in that yeah. rider? <laughs> <laughs> Zero. <laughs> fair, fair. Anyways, after you murder uh, Gauss, uh, you have this really cool interaction with Seth um, where he kind of explains to you that altars are kind of revered as gods in a way, and everybody kind of has a, like a weird fascination and like a fear of them, and that he he wonders why your character he or she wonders why like seth isn't helping out shira and the rest of the team and he kind of informs you like there's this bigger thing going on besides what you know and like it tells you about this dude and like gives you these visions of this man named Moloch, who is this crazy powerful powerful altered and that like there's a separate war going on within this war that we understand and that, like, since we are newly altered, we, like, can't really grasp the, like, idea of how powerful this person is. And I, this is the part of the story that I was super into, you know? This, yeah, this is at the point where we were like, okay, this is, like, the anime melodrama. That This is where it starts. Because <laughs> right. he, like, does the psychokinetic, like, pulls you over to him and holding you up. And, like, the cliche, yeah. I'm going to monologue to you as I'm grasping your throat. Um, but and... this is... This is my favorite line thus far in the game is he goes they think of you as a god so shepherd them 
And I, I love that. Yeah, that's a good line. Yeah. You know, it's such a good line of like, yeah, like I, as as Chris and I ran through these people, uh, I felt like a god, and I will shepherd these people. And it, with involved, bullets. It's great. That's right. <laughs> shepherd them with time bullets. dimension zones that you can't <laughs> get through. Anyways, we're moving on to the reunion mission. So um, we are going to the first city to um, find a specific person that Shira and excuse me Ugh. got a burp oh, burping. No. sorry and uh, Jakob say that we need to find uh, we later learn his name is Zahidi he's very important and hopefully not dead they don't even know that's one of the things that's kind of annoying right is they're like hey go find this guy is he dead eh 50 50. <laughs> we don't know. But yeah. we are also introduced to Jane in this moment. And Jane is the one who had the hood on who woke you from cryo sleep. So mm -hmm. she's very, very important. Super important character. Yeah. You won't need to worry about her in about five minutes. Okay. Well, we were going to get to that. Anyways, <laughs> there's, a, there's a consistent theme of characters seem pretty cool that might be important. Kill them. Nah. <laughs> Yeah, the uh, only ones gonna... that are probably safer are, are like Yakub and Zahidi because they have I, gameplay they functions the tied to them. Two who are safe. See, and point. I think they're the ones that need to die to make an impact. Like literally playing through. I don't give a shit about any of these. I don't know, man. That historian like, lady. I don't with care. Her, with her boobs hanging out all the time. <laughs> so, she's got to go. She'll make an impact. What, what was this? What was this? <laughs> it's my so job. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so you make your way through the first city. There's a lot of different um, arenas that you have to fight. And then you finally find Dr. Zahidi. And there's, like, the sequence where, like, an insurgent is holding him hostage. And, like, you kind of separate them. And then, like, Jane wants you to kill him. But Zahidi's like, no, don't kill him. Like, he could be useful. And then the guy yeah. just pulls a gun and fucking shoots Jane under the chin. That's because she wanted to kill him. Yeah, but, like, Zahidi's like, hey, don't shoot this guy. You know, we, he, maybe we could turn him. He could be helpful. And then the guy pulls a gun and shoots Jane. Well, and, Zahidi had no and, power, and Jane had a giant fucking gun. So, I mean, right. I'm going to back the guy that doesn't have a gun. He's going to save me. Yeah, but then right. you're a giant lady with a freaking sniper your guy rifle. Then pulls a gun and shoots the insurgent in the head. Yeah, well. You know, and, it, and, like, and it's... To me, it, that whole sequence was kind of just dumb and annoying because, like, Zahidi sounds so remorseful throughout the walkie talking that's going on or whatever and then as soon as that mission's over he has no remorse about jane he doesn't really mention very much he it just she just vanishes off the face of the uh, earth i'll be honest like, when that happened i was but, shocked i was also very shocked which I, <laughs> i'm sure like, that's all they were going for is the one moment of shock that's all they cared about probably. right i i, I was not, not. See that coming i was like holy shit i thought she was gonna be important because she woke us from cryo and the fact that she like just immediately gets shot in the face basically i was like whoa game yeah Slow your i mean roll. it's already happened twice well it's, it's happened happen pretty immediately side mission it's it's happened pretty immediately right like we've rescued mccain shot we meet chang shot we meet the guy in the back of the McCain truck stab i think hmm? you can i i did not do mccain at this point so but it's it's in this area it's like within a mission from this point or yeah you, i mean you know, i did like, mccain during the demo so yeah yeah it was definitely it's, in the last area which that was a funny I, side mission by the way i really i like that I guy he reminded me of and it also like introduces you to the freaking giant like creatures oh, that yeah. you're probably gonna have to deal yeah. with later the giant like tower the creatures things. they're like even oh, the yeah. altar mm -hmm. near them is gone let's talk about those so. real quick because like they're like these giant roaming beasts that are just like travel the land and they're in the opening cutscene of the game. Not really cutscene, but kind of like with the title eagle card. flying by, yeah. dropping somebody on the ground. Yeah, or of like outside. letting you know who developed the game and who published the game. Yeah. And you see one for the first time in the game, and they're just like, "Hey, don't fuck with that thing." Like we, all, everybody respects these. We have right. no that's, idea. What it's really are. stupid too, because the lore basically just says that exact same thing. It's like we don't know what this is. Just fucking leave it alone, or it'll murder everybody. But that's super interesting because like. Well, it's not. It doesn't tell you anything. I don't give a shit. It's yeah, a giant walking turd at this point. We'll find out eventually, which is <sighs> not necessarily. Yeah, they could just. Stop, have been Tom, sitting it's there. interesting. I mean, it's interesting. 
it's it not. is interesting to some extent because like you're wondering if they play into the anomaly or if they're like the cause of the anomaly or if they're an evolution from the anomaly or whatever yeah, exactly. else yeah like, it's it's a narrative it's it's a narrative thread that could potentially have payoff because it is teased but at this point like you're given little to go off of to begin with so i could totally see like not having an interest whatsoever because it's like oh it's a big ominous silhouette not fighting it right now so it has no impact on me but it, it yeah. could be something cool down the line I, I i i would like to see it mean something but i'm not holding my breath on it having any interesting payoff other than it killing so like someone that is introduced five minutes prior right. <laughs> I, if i am not on a saddle riding one of those things, <laughs> 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 uh, but the reason I was shocked when Jane dies because we saw like she lived for more than three minutes. So yeah, she, like, had, she had a good time. <laughs> right. yeah. Everybody else she had good pretty run. immediate. Yeah, had better odds. <laughs> but um, and we're talking about that side quest, but also the other side quest where you kill that fire captain or whatever, and he does all the fire tornadoes mm -hmm. and stuff. He kind of spits out some lines that partake in the insurgents versus the altered wars and all this other stuff too, where he's talking about like why are you working for Shira? And he's talking about, you don't know what they did to us and all this other stuff like that. So like the side quests themselves are trying to help set up for stuff. Mm -hmm. I'm just hopeful that it actually pays off in right. some way. Doing some Which, of the heavy lifting. By the time yeah. we get to the end of the first city, we'll kind of have a little bit more lore behind like what actually happened and what set this thing off. Because I do think that is interesting of like what ends up happening. So, um, anyways, Jane gets shot in the face, and Zahidi appears. Yay! Oh, that's right. And Zahidi's gonna save her. Uh, but in the meantime, we have to find this very important briefcase because we gotta help decode the frequency that we wrote down on our hands. Back in the which, forest, which for the cryo. How disgusting are you that you haven't washed your hands and yeah? Fucking... What the I mean, <laughs> sure, that's fine. That's it's a grim dark world, all that. Why the fuck didn't anyone write that down on a piece of paper? If it's that important of information, why is that on his not... hand still perfect? Yeah, yeah hand hand. but like, why Nobody. is that? He wrote that down and was like, "Fuck it, take it with me to my grave." And like, does not <laughs> the second he gets there and tells Shira and Jakob that he has that that the character has it written on your hand, no one writes it down on anything to no, like no. preserve it because I that's know. like world shifting dynamic information. That they don't like engrave into into like metal or anything. To, like we need to preserve this frequency. <laughs> Our livelihood depends on it. Uh, oh no, I lost the last digit. We all die. Yeah, <laughs> so that's, that's, that's part of uh, that's part of your powers. The ink never goes away. <laughs> I wish I wish the way you're like... wording that though. It's it just reminds me of like some of the newer Star Wars trilogy stuff and everything, where the storyline is kind of following. A bit too of a predictable path and it's just find this item to help us fix this problem oh and now find this item to help mm. us fix this problem yep. and it's they're building towards some intrigue and stuff and they're letting stuff go in a way where it might pay off but like whenever you get logical and you think about it it's like why the fuck is why don't you just like you said write that down or you know whatever else it's just very just weird to secure it in story. case I get that you're you're an altered and like you're a god now, blah blah blah. But like, you might encounter another altered and fucking die. They should just chop his hand off at least. Then yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I He's wish I had given us the moment. <laughs> it probably grow back. Grow back. I mean, you got like rebarred through the freaking heart at the beginning of the game. Uh huh. The game has done so many like jokes, like in conversations at this point. I wish it would have had that moment where he's like. Giving the digits like seven. Is that an eight? Uh, yeah. Nine, five. I don't know. It looks. Well, like let's guess. Is this a, is this jam on my hand? I don't know what this is. You know. Yeah, but you're like you're wearing gloves for some of it. You're probably sweating. You're fighting a lot. Like, you're holding guns. Like that. The fact that it doesn't smear at all. Like, sure, fine, but th like that's that that just stood out to me as like just an asinine oversight. Right. For how important that information was. 
I must not be his dominant hand. He doesn't jerk off with that one, so it doesn't That's roll right. off. Swear. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get the hard-hitting questions here, all right? All this this. About you call Which hand? Does, that's the character customization. You masturbate <laughs> as your outrider. Man, even Cyberpunk didn't go that far. Please pick your masturbation hand. <laughs> yeah, your customization. Jesus. I think... I, I th oh, sorry. I found it. The rest of it's down here. Yeah. <laughs> I rubbed off on my dick. Oh. No. There's the last two. Oh, no. Anyway. Jesus Christ. Oh, all right. Uh... Uh, so there's like a handful of side quests here. Yeah, it's a handful. I don't think any of them are interesting. Actually, the the side quests are well, at least one side quest is the only thing that actually got me my interest peaked in this game. Is it, I mean, is it the last old one. man who was talking no, about? The, I don't uh, give it. That was fucking stupid. One. I didn't like that one. Oh, I knew from the get go. I'm like, you're not getting anything. This guy's literally going back to get like a fucking music box or something. Fucking I thought stupid. it was interesting because he tells you about like the first city and like what happened and. You learned that the first city was this, like, habitat built for, like, 50,000 people, but, like, over half a million people were pushed into this space. And that's oh, really okay. weird, like, this whole entire war <laughs> set off where, you know, half a million people were put into this tiny space and food was a shortage and... Well, they can eat each other, man. You can't you can't about other. the insurgent side of the story, which that's literally where that all comes from, so... <laughs> I, it yeah. just was. I love that. It's just like I mean, like I together. like that part of the story as a whole because it's just your classic RPG type story where there's a smaller war, but then there's a bigger war that's kind of overtaking said war. But at the same time, it was like the old guy thing. I did not care about. I don't like. I don't need somebody to give me the exposition of. Oh yeah, they sent a bunch of us to Earth and they crammed us on the city and now we're fighting for stuff because Shira's already told me that I don't need the side quest to tell me exactly what Shira's already told me. Like Yeah. It, yeah. It, like fun side quest, fun enough, like all the side quests are fun, but like I didn't need the story of that side quest. I, I'm with Tyler on this actually. I really like the story in that side quest. And then the other side quest you do here for uh Zahidi, uh there's at least one note I have from that of like the, you know, they picked this planet because they did scans for like a really long time to find the perfect planet mm -hmm. for them to populate. But then they were in hypersleep for 67 years on their way to this planet and something changed because they never saw right. the anomaly or anything in those 67 years there. So either something changed on the planet in the 67 years or the humans themselves somehow caused the anomaly. Uh, and yeah, I'm curious to see where that I goes. I can agree with. Like that one, we don't get that idea from the general landscape and people prior, really. So, like, because prior to hearing him say that, I was just like, oh, they chose this planet and there's a fucked up storm. How did they not notice that when they're talking about scams all the freaking time and stuff? Mm -hmm. But apparently from him saying that, it gives you the idea of why they went onto the planet and they didn't know what the fuck was going on. So you're saying the planet was altered. Uh -huh. <laughs> Could it just be that they didn't scan this valley where we happen up, to boys. land? <laughs> we did it. Our job's done. <laughs> um, anyway, so you get the it's, black box yeah, underneath the truck for Zahidi after fighting a new enemy, which is like these weird mutated people who were left behind in the first city. Um, how do you guys feel about this new enemy type? Dumb. Okay, cool, Tom. Thanks. <laughs> Wait, they're fine. They're. Enemy? they're they're another they're a different enemy type they're a little bit more feral they have a different attack type they remind me of i mean not one for one but they do remind me a lot of gears of wars locusts and like specifically the wretches oh yeah. you're talking about those i thought those were just actual animals that got mutated in some no way. those were people that got mutated oh really yeah i didn't yeah i must have missed that, that either <laughs> yeah, those yeah were see, people that's... that got mutated by the anomaly mm -hmm. that were left behind okay. in the first city who said that? Like, where is that actually said, though? Um, I it's in Tyler's brain. <laughs> yeah, fuck off, Tom. <laughs> and he shared it with the, Rob. The beer has told him. Because we haven't gotten there yet, but there, whenever you get to the volcano, there are people talking about, oh, we don't know if the animals themselves are evolving to adapt to the situation, or if the anomaly is causing them to evolve. Yeah. And that's why I assumed all these little creepy monsters and stuff were monsters that evolved in some weird way. I so. believe it's Zahidi that talks about the anomaly mutating people. Because okay. well, they yeah. talk about the anomaly and how like some people are completely 
like destroyed by it and it like basically turns them inside out some people are mutated by it and some people get powers i remember mm. that yeah. i do remember that yeah, one. i remember yeah zabrowski saying some people turn pink polka dot yeah, yeah. Exactly. and so uh i mean it, i'm sure there's something i mean you probably yeah, just have there, to load the it, game there up there is click like a little yeah picture for the monster and then it'll probably say what they supposedly are but... i'm gonna do that when we fire it up yeah i believe it is they were altered by the anomaly in some way they were originally human but, yeah, and I, I think that's a cool aspect too, for sure. Yeah, that would be an interesting way to go about it, and then it would tie the game up even more so into some Gears of War type aspects, because towards the later part right. you start to find out what the locusts are and all this other shit in Gears Four and Five and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it would mean that they're taking a lot of story beats and gameplay beats from Gears, which they've obviously been a part of. So, mm -hmm. yep. Um, so. Basically, every mission is kind of structured as, like, go get this thing, go talk to this person or something. There's a lot of battle arenas in between. So you have to go with this black box under this truck for Zahidi. You do a lot of battle arenas. You finally get the black box. Um, you cross a bridge that has a chain that looks like a bike chain that Rob and I both <laughs> saw today. <laughs> Tonka like, bridge. <laughs> that looks like a bike chain. Um, so you finally get the black box and then from there Zahidi is like hey we need a stronger signal boost to try to decipher where this original frequency is coming from so that's where we find out about this satellite that is actually positioned on eagle peaks which will take us to our last area but before that i do want to talk about the side quest of terra and firma and oh yeah just how stupid that is because it's like uh, Shira wants you to go look for like Lieutenant McCain, who is stuck behind the enemy lines. Mm -hmm. Very and, important. Yeah, he's like the most important character in the game. And so you go and you do like this giant firefight to find Lieutenant McCain, and he is trapped underneath rubble with a bunch of insurgents. And the insurgents like are like, "Hey, we'll work with you to help get out of here. Like we're all in this together." But then he just turns around, shoots the one in the face, throws a grenade on into the rubble where all the other ones are trapped underneath. It's like, fuck it. I'm out. And then turns around and then gets shot in the face from across the battlefield. Yeah, literally your character says, dude, what the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And he turns around like, this is war. This is... Josh yeah, yeah. shot off. And then he gets shot in the face. Yes. I mean, I kind of liked that as a whole. I did too. I thought it was so, funny. Like, I it's loved it. funny. Like, it's a funny, like, shock. Like, what the hell is that crap but that really got out of hand quick yeah it's yeah. it's still just like stupid silly like it's like why is that a yeah thing? It, it was one of those things where i was sitting there i was like well this makes no sense but let's go with it so must must not be important no right so uh now we're off to eagle peaks to find the uh radio tower and decode the frequency and uh at Eagle Peaks, you need to get onto the gondola to get to the radio tower, but the gondola is in, like, the insurgent territory. It's, like, heavily guarded. But there's also, like, this weird thing going on within the gondola where the gondola will get, like, kind of succumbed with smoke from the, like, adjacent volcano, and people will go missing from this gondola, and nobody knows what's going on. So you kind of offer yourself up to go and investigate the situation and take care of the problem. So, once you do that, you go up through uh, this, like, snowy mountain environment, which I think is, like, the coolest environment that we've seen so far. Very unique compared to everything else. Everything else has been kind of like a cityscape in a way. You maybe want to play uh, Lost Planet again. Right? And I, Chris, did I not fucking say that? <laughs> yeah, he did. I 100% said that when I was playing. Like, this looks like Lost Planet. Yeah, it's, it probably... Up until this point, everything has just been post-apocalyptic city, similar to something like Remnant. Um, that first little bit's just kind of one note. Still fun, but kind of the same palette. And then you get to Eagle Peaks, and it's like, oh, it's a frosty, frigid mountaintop on top of a volcano. This is dope. Yeah, and not only that, but, like, you're also introduced to new enemy varieties, like, immediately. Like, you have, like, mm -hmm. these crazy, like, raven birds that come through and like swoop at you and like they kind of stay high up in the sky but then they'll come closer and like they just have like a weird yeah they're fight like pattern they're like wyverns yeah they're, they're weird cool. like they have the craziest fight style i've ever seen it's just 
it doesn't really make sense. Like they're kind of close, but kind of far, but you can still do damage in a relative way. It's one of the few times like it, it takes the tools that you have in a combat encounter and kind of turns it on its head and makes you like, you can't rely on everything you've done prior. Yeah. I mean, it's also just an enemy where it's like, fuck the devastator. So yeah, well, it's like, the first time I went through there, I was like, well, the devastator has a really rough time with these like, guys. None of them can do too much. Yeah, I know. Except <laughs> but them, every time I came through with every weird. character, I was like, uh, oh, wait, this character. Yeah, you can't really hit him either. Techno was the only one that I was like, I, mean, I can still put on my minigun oh, and drill through I this did. thing dodged the flight attack, shot them, they landed on the ground, and then I impaled them, and then ran up and yeah. pulled their head off with my shotgun. I didn't have an issue so much with the Devastator fighting them. Yeah, once they I get mean, on the ground, they're easy. With fighting them, it's just like... It definitely slows the pace abilities down. to feel like they should be the focus of the game, and then you have a whole enemy type that just makes the enemies not... I don't know, makes your abilities not do anything. It's weird. Yeah. yeah. It, it's weird to be put in an uncomfortable position this far into it when like at this point you feel like you have so much control over the battlefield and like now you're presented with this new option or hurdle depending on how you look at it and it just makes you rethink the way that you're going to combat this thing mm -hmm. that's kind of how i looked at it for sure yeah. all my battlefields are just chaos and me running around so. that's right yeah um one of the things i really like about this environment is like there's a, like a lot of cultist propaganda kind of like all around the place which like there is a cultist kind of that side mission so good side quest that you do later <laughs> so on good. Uh, but it is really interesting and unique and it's something that you don't see like throughout the first part of this game up until this point and it, it, it just lends itself to a different taste of this world and what the people who have been on Enoch up to this point are doing and, and I like that a lot yeah, I really like the <clears throat> excuse me the environment design throughout here, like the big ice spikes jutting out as you're walking past yeah. that first checkpoint, and then later on the weird like beehive looking volcano. It's super cool. Yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we should mention that this is where we in are introduced to like the little spider enemies that very much look like the uh, tickers from mm -hmm. Years of War. Yep, yep. yep. The they're just tickers. <laughs> yep. But uh, eventually, you make your way into the volcano and you fight the giant fucking boss the molten arkari right arkari i don't think i paid spider. attention to I thought it was like arachne. akari akari it's a, it's akari? a spider akari. that becomes akari. a centipede at one point or some akari. shit like anyway it's a, spider it's and a, a centipede. giant bug that you fight in a spider y'all that's all that matters and, it's got uh, lava weak spots and it's got three phases so this is like <laughs> the very first MMO style boss I felt like where it's like okay we're gonna fight this it's gonna have another phase we're gonna fight this it's gonna have another phase and it was uh, fun I fucking love this fight I think it's yeah, great I enjoyed it a lot the so we were fighting we Ren and I played this while there were still some technical networking hiccups and so right as the cutscene started Ryan gets booted out of the the <laughs> fight <laughs> and yeah, so too. I'm just doing the whole fight solo and just like uh uh uh, and I somehow like uh, managed to scrape by and pull it out on in one try. And then he's like, "Yeah, it looked fun." It looked like it was fun. <laughs> and then so we re fired it up and then redid it, and it was uh, completely different. But yeah, he stepped away for a second, came back on third phase. Like this is different than what was happening. <laughs> yeah, when uh, that also happened to me in genetics when we were playing, I'd already done the boss though, so I was like, "Oh, I'll just go jump in the lava and die." You take a very small amount of damage from standing in lava. It took like a good minute of standing yeah, there to die. I saw the challenge. The game, you can't like rejoin nope. the game whenever they're in a boss fight. So. He couldn't. Yeah. That when I was waiting for a little, I was just kind of running around waiting for him to join up. That's and he what couldn't. he was doing too. And then I told yeah. him, and he's like, "Oh, I'm just gonna go jump in the lava." I was dedicated. I was like, "I'm already here. I'm a fuck this up. This is a challenge. I'll fight this <laughs> boss again. That'll be fun." But I had to see if I could do it, and I did it <laughs> barely. I like. I like the boss design of him, but both times me and Chris fought him, I was like, I had to do fucking nothing for this fight i just <laughs> stood in one spot and legit just shot at him like the attacks were not frequent enough and like i did not have to do anything it's weird like i just stood there and shot at him both times nothing happened interesting i used my sidearm almost the entire thing because i ran out of ammo oh <laughs> my god yeah we we had probably a I would say Ryan pretty dynamic fight. Like it had a lot of variety to it, and like kept attacking a lot of different spots, made us move around a bunch. For like fighting it solo at World Tier Six was interesting. 
yeah, yeah I, I really felt like when Chris and I were doing it I was all over that space like mm -hmm. running yeah. around <laughs> shooting everything shooting it's like weak points shooting the little spider critters that were running up on the platforms and I felt like it was very dynamic and yeah. fluid and fun I loved it yeah I, I still had know. a very melee focused uh, trickster build at that point and it does not work against that spider at all because no, he creates lava we all around him our shit going yeah. the insurgents yeah. there uh, also, I had a bug several times playing with Tyler, but specifically in this boss fight where, like, my character would not move. Like, he'd jitter very slowly to move unless I was doing a movement skill. And that is yep. very hard in this boss I, fight. I had that, but it wasn't during the boss fight. It was when I was playing with Ryan, and we were playing on our alts. I was playing Trickster. He was playing Devastator. And uh, there's probably footage of it, too, because uh, it was when he was recording uh, our gameplay. And just, like, if I was... Trying to, it was like a network thing where I was trying to walk forward. It was like, da, 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 yeah. da, 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 da. and then if I rolled, totally fine. Yeah, that was, it was, it was obnoxious. Yeah. Came, right? So I wonder yeah. if that got fixed with these new patches. That it's out. been fine ever since. Yeah. 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 There's also, we should talk about the dancing bug. You guys want to talk about yeah. the dancing bug? <laughs> it's not a bug, it's a feature. <laughs> That's right. And footage has been recorded and sent to you, Chris. It'll uh, be in the video version. Time to put it in. Uh, so, obviously, games like this have emotes. Uh, there's a nice little dancing jig emote you get at the, the start of the the game. Rob, whenever he was hosting, would uh, dance and then not stop unless he interacted with, uh, like, ammo or picked up an item. We could mm -hmm. go through cutscenes and he would still be dancing. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, and the best was when we started in, in combat. And you see, it, it should have it on the footage, too. Like, I, I'm still dancing. My gun is flailing in my hand, and the bullets are coming from the tip of the gun, no matter where it is relative to its position in my hand, and it's still firing in the direction that I'm aiming. So, it like, it was great. It, it was oh, fantastic. That's amazing. Just, just like team post dancing. It. That's a yeah, I, feature, dude. I don't even care. Exactly. That's, yep. We keep saying, like, never fix this, please. This is amazing. <laughs> And we, like we, I do everything in my power to just repeat it constantly, and I could get it to repeat. And it, I just danced for like five, six seconds, and then started going, and it maintained it. And so every time I had an opportunity in combat with Ryan, I dance and then run into the thick of stuff, and he just <laughs> see me <laughs> dancing, shooting shit with a shotgun. It uh, happened and today as well. Yep. No, it it's not. Today. It's not fixed either. Sweet. It's so good. <laughs> Never fix so it, good. please. Oh. All right. Uh, after we defeat, defeat the uh, giant spider centipede thing, um, we are able to access the gondola to go into the insurgents area and go towards the radio tower. But we have the option to do a side quest um, that basically takes you into a cultist group that is about to execute a person. <laughs> like, your outrider just stands there and watches this guy get fucking kicked <laughs> off of the... the <laughs> He's just sitting and observing, like, well, that sucks. He does nothing. Well, yeah, I gotta him. help that guy. <laughs> and, uh... Yes. It's funny because once you, like, kill the dude, like, all of the cultists, like, kind of look at you and, like, they, like, start bowing down to you and they want to, like, worship you. All of a sudden, your guy's just like, I'm not a fucking... Uh, no, no, I, I don't want none of this. None right. of this. But it's basically just an excuse to uh, go shoot some more people and get some loot. That tracks. You know, nothing relevant to the story in any way. But there, now I we mean, know there is a culture yeah. of cultists that worship right. the anomaly. But it does like further hit on the general point that Seth or whatever was giving earlier mm -hmm. about the altar to revered as gods. Well, the anomaly yeah. Yeah. created said altars. So there's a whole cult like worshipping the storm and yeah. then you have other people like the guy earlier on that was basically worshipping Seth and it's like oh god I, I have to bow down to him and he took you to Shira or whatever mm -hmm. so it's just showing more of the societal dynamics that exist within the world after the 31 years have passed mm -hmm. Yeah. so it's interesting and then you go back and you finally take on the gondola unless you want to do what Chris and I did and stand in front of the flamethrowers yeah and... they will shoot you in the face with flamethrowers they don't care it doesn't hurt yeah. But it's very yeah, funny tell to tell you to watch out. Yeah, you'll walk in front and they're like, hey, get out of there. And yeah, and while also aiming it at the cable that the gondola is attached <laughs> to. That's right. Not a care in the world. They're doing uh, it to heat people up or something? What are they doing it they're for? They're melting it's ice. Just, they're melting you know, ice, yeah. yeah. They're, 
But he was just doing it so like casually, just right on the cable where the gondolas hung on. Like, like, a beer, I one it looked like he was just shooting into the air above the chick, and I was like, <laughs> is she just that cold? Like you're just trying to eat her up or hey, something? It's freezing up there. It's so cold. It's like I'd be Mount thankful Everett for that, there. honestly. <laughs> what a well thought out use of resources. Yeah. Uh, but once you ride the gondola, you go into the insurgent territory, and like this is just hella gunfights all over yeah. the place like some of the most intense gunfights that we've seen obviously thus far um this is where i probably had the most fun because this is the time where chris and i like sat down for a second and like respect and talked about mm. how we were gonna like make our characters and afterwards it was just a slaughter just an absolute slaughter and it felt so good so satisfying yeah yeah, this is the area that uh, every character I played, whether solo, duo, whatever, uh, I had the most trouble. And I think it was mostly just the fact that this is where I hit, you know, World Tier 6, World, World Tier, Tier 7. seven. Yeah. yeah. That's where it Which, starts. Like, as a whole, I almost feel like I would want to replay the the game just sitting at one World Tier that's, like, relatively normal. Because, like, I feel like the World Tier and me being stubborn and just leaving it is skewing my vision of like that was a really good fight like because comparatively to earlier fights like or vice versa they like go back to earlier fights and play them on world tier seven or something like that yeah because, it like, even it skews the vision of what's a good fight in the game and like you can't really compare different parts of the game which is probably part of their reasoning for world tiers so whole. yeah it even says when you go into the world tier over each of them it says like world tier one story world tier two normal world tier three this and like right. hard and then extreme so we're making our way through the insurgents base and making it's just my a lot way of firefights downtown. shut the fuck up <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i'm trying to get this thing back on track <laughs> shut the fuck up it's too late. <laughs> uh, now I just see Terry Crews in it. <laughs> I know, just put Terry Crews over his face when he started seeing it. Uh, oh my god. <laughs> All right, you let me know when I can continue. Or not. You, you can continue. We're, we're yeah. doing great. Everything's not going well. saying wrong. we'll stop you. Oh, okay. Anyways. We're going through the insurgents base and we're doing all kinds of firefights. Chris and I, we were having a good time during this part. Any interruptions yet, Tom? <laughs> uh, no, I'm looking for the Terry Crews gif. Uh, okay, cool. Sorry. I'm going to keep Go going. Um, so We've got a bunch of firefights here. And eventually we make our way up to the satellite. Finally. And uh, once you kill everybody, you finally send the gondola back down. And Zahidi takes that gondola, comes right on back up. Uh, he takes it standing yeah. up? Yeah. Why is he not laying down to prevent... Any insurgents we didn't kill that might be, like, hiding in the mountainside from, like, sure. sniping him through the fucking neck? Popping off I his jaw? I've played enough Outriders to know where this is going. <laughs> <laughs> it was at this moment he realized he fucked up. It That's just right. stops with the bullet right next to his head and then goes to the to-be-continued JoJo's. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but ZD comes up and you guys finally decode the frequency and you find out that there is actually a third frequency that is coming from the forest in this no forest. fucking way. Yeah, it's crazy, no. Tom. Just you just hold on. Are you strapped in? No. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, <laughs> so it's coming from the forest. Just dead air. <laughs> and if, that's all my jokes land on dead air. <laughs> He's in a consistent workshopping mode. <laughs> That's right. That's all. That's the reason I podcast is so I can just workshop jokes and take on my stand-up tour. Then he tells his kids and then just slays. Yeah. <laughs> Ollie's like laying on the ground. Just, ah! yeah. yeah, my kids love when I tell them. Oh, and I told Tom, fuck you. My kids are cracking up. I mean, <laughs> I, I could believe that Ollie would be cracking up from killing him. <laughs> Anyways... <laughs> You find out about this third frequency that's coming from the forest, and apparently the forest is like this very crazy area that like nobody really comes back from. Uh, nobody oh, like knows every the... spot we've been to. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nobody, but like nobody has come back from this area. Nobody knows what's going on in this area that's causing like these weird occurrences to happen. It's just like really strange, and everybody's kind of freaked out by it. 
No, I think uh, Jakob's the only one that's freaked out because he just turned off the radio and stopped listening to him. Yeah, I like that little bit where he's like, yeah. oh, my, my fucking luck. We have to go to the forest. And then you just, nah, I'm not going like, to listen Let's turn the radio off for a little bit. Yeah. That's a good touch. Uh-huh. I like that. And uh, so that is the end of the section. But we didn't do the alchemist. Yeah, the alchemist. Oh, yeah, I like the side quest side with the alchemist. Quest this is literally the only quest that I actually, like, piqued my interest with the little, like, voices and... Okay, then go away. Do you take it? Take it. No, away. no, no, no. <laughs> no you, 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 you take. It. You fight some shit, and people say th- I didn't take notes on it, man. This is <laughs> the only one that I cared for. You liked it, but you took no notes on it. But still, uh, it's a there, fine you hear game. A girl whispering in your ear. Yeah, and then you some dude whispering. And she does some other stuff. And there's a guy with a piece of rebar through his head, <laughs> which you find out is the alchemist. There's a your Molik or mollusk or. And somehow the you weird guy that's got some he, he's a shriveled up crucified the man on the back. <laughs> Shellfish man. Yeah. Oyster. I'm pretty sure it's Patrick's cousin. Uh, <laughs> right. uh, I did like I liked this mission as well. I liked the this was the closest it got to feeling something akin to like Dead Space. A little bit yeah, of a horror creepy. element to it. Yeah, definitely. Um, and the like seeing the flashback and seeing who the uh, Moloch or Mollusk is. Uh, and that's a, I, th- I want to call him Mollusk from now on. <laughs> that's a great sea name. Snail. Right. Gary. <laughs> 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 but uh, um, it, it's, it's got good imagery. It's, it's interesting, um, but it's one of those like, okay, cool. Is it going to pay off in some way? We'll I see. I do like, the only part about this that I actually like really liked is the, the flashback section where like you kind of touch the body yeah. and you get that like few seconds before uh, the alchemist is killed and you see you know Moloch stand above him and put the rebar through his forehead basically. I mean, I Gary. that part was fuck off. <laughs> off. <laughs> I'm gonna I mean, confuse the odd of audience. <laughs> no, this Gary, we need to have there. narrative consistency. Gary, yeah. Gary, Gary the, the mollusk. Snail. Gary the mollusk. Okay, so Gary the snail was sitting <laughs> on the ground, and Moloch comes up and puts Meow. the bar through his head, and then SpongeBob's like, "Gary the snail." <laughs> That's exactly what happened. Thank you. <laughs> Bring it around town. That's right. <laughs> that and this and that and this and that and then. Um, speaking of dead space, I like that this game has the push, like, you push up on the D-pad and it'll give you a little, like, arrow of exactly where to go. Yeah. I feel like I don't use that enough, but it's useful. I mean, you uh, don't really need to. It's pretty just path anyway. Well, that is there are a few sections my... that, uh, uh, you know, I ran in the wrong direction for a side quest. So. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you might have a little bit of backtracking to cut out for those videos I uploaded for you, Chris. I... <laughs> yeah. So, something worth pointing out, I... I agree. I appreciate when it has that like little beam that guides you, but Chris even saw this when we were getting footage for it, and he hopped in the chat for a little bit. The map marker was not updating to the appropriate location we were supposed to go. Yeah, yeah so that's it was like telling us to go behind. Like, if, no, I was just there. The fuck am I supposed to go now? Like, spent probably twenty, thirty minutes like going around a spot because we couldn't find the path, and it was not. Yeah, I think I was doing that old man quest, and mm-hmm. it was still on the main quest yep. the way that it was giving me the path to and I'm like I know it's not that way what the fuck I think that might have been the same quest we were on when that happened too yeah it's the old man's fault God, you know one of the things just can't give you good direction <laughs> as, as we're nearing the end of this that we haven't talked about is the auto loot system Ah, yes. it was, it was, I was going to say that up yeah. on the D-pad is not the most important button on that D-pad though yeah, and the up on the D-pad is what made me think of the auto loot system which I did not know about until today you know, I knew about the missing loot system where you can go into the uh, options and detect, you know, if you missed anything up to a certain rarity, that'll automatically go into your inventory. But then Ryan and Rob inform me that if you hit down on the D-pad, at least on PlayStation 5, it'll automatically pick up any loot that is on the ground that you are not near. Including gear, minerals, anything. Well, except for bullets, but... Yeah, yeah exactly. Ammo's the only thing that doesn't pick up. Yeah. How very Diablo. I mean, isn't that, that, isn't that the same thing as basically just finishing the mission or the room out or whatever and it auto-loots it? Potentially, but you could get something that is good mid-mission. Yeah, mid-mission, which it has helped equip. out throughout yeah. the middle of the fight. Yeah, I did not know about that 
until three seconds ago, but I did have <laughs> I did have auto loot set to common, so I was still getting all the items. Yeah, but not which the only reason I knew about the auto loot set to common is because of Chris. <laughs> I guess for me, the reason I like the auto loot button over just the end of mission auto loot is I realize I'm picking the loot up, so I, mm -hmm. I'm seeing it populate in the bottom right corner of my screen, and I know what I might be interested in to go right. see if I got something better than what I previously had, where when I load in after mission point, I, I might see it populate, but because I didn't initiate that, it doesn't click so yeah. hard to, to go check it that yeah. does make sense and yeah we've got in a habit where uh when right through uh, when right and i discover this and kind of just doing it um we uh call it just like hey loot's on the ground you can so that way we can just call out you can hit your button and get it but we, we also had the three of us today a uh, a fun back and forth with <laughs> palpatine quotes oh this was Oh my god, it was so great. We spent probably 30 minutes just workshopping things like near homophones to like the phrase do it uh, that he says. And so we started doing different jokes with it. But I've now, I was telling him every time I do it from now on, I call out loot, I'm just going to say loot it. Uh, because of how much time we'd spent. Just, oh, that was so fucking fun. Yeah. <laughs> It was in tears from some of the bullshit oh. we were doing. It was so stupid and fun. Tom, that's why it. I love these games. It, it's Slay and Tom. He's these jokes. <laughs> He's here for Palpatine. Um, I played seventy five percent of this by myself. So, me. so hopefully, great. well, hopefully, you will be able to play through more with everyone now. That it yeah, seems... that's that's the way to do it. Yeah, the yeah, it's, it's more of my though. time restraint. Oh, for sure. That's the problem. For sure. You know, you know, my schedule works with your schedule pretty well. Yeah, don't except be afraid to be didn't, time. except for the first time we played. That's well, that I'm that is the benefit, though, of having five other people. Is with now the crossplay, like if there's you get free time, there's a good there's a good chance at least one of us will be able to. Because um, I, yeah. I mean, totally I played some with my dad, but uh, he's about as hot on it as I am. And Fair. we play every like these are the games we play together, like. Right. Division, any Tom Clancy, um, Destiny, mm -hmm. like Anthem, like those are all games, and we're both we're just kind of like fair it's a game. Fair. Do you put, an it, do you put Anthem game. above this? Gameplay I one? I enjoyed Anthem more than I am enjoying this. Yes. Well, I I mean to be cut the feed. Cut the feed. Cut it, cut it. <laughs> I don't care what you guys think. <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> Anthem's credit. That game feels incredible to play. Mm -hmm. Everything else around it, bad. But the moment to moment <laughs> flying around, shooting shit, and, like the fact they eventually changed it where you could like change your gear mid mission, it was a blast to play. Flying yeah, around I felt know. great. I was so bought into Anthem, I bought a copy for me and a friend. Well, Oof. Hey, it's okay to be wrong about video games. I realize, but this is a better game. <laughs> and, uh, for me, I played the demo of Anthem and was super turned off and never spent money on it. But that's neither here nor there. We haven't really talked too much about like the actual abilities of the classes and stuff. Uh, anybody have any abilities that, like that really stand out? We talked a lot oh, about minigun. Yes. But... I would like if the Devastator didn't turn into a fucking turd. Maybe you should play a different class. We should play a bad time. <laughs> oh, I should start over already, and like I barely finished today. Like I don't think I'm yes. gonna make it the next one. Oh, I we we ran through pretty much this entire section within what uh, two hours? Two hours. Yeah. yeah. Just skipping cutscenes and everything. Yeah, just cruise right through it. Yep. I, that minigun's fun, but I don't think it really comes online until you get some of the armor augments for it that give you like, mm. oh, here's 2,000 bonus armor on top of your 300 health to uh, when as soon as you activate the minigun. Uh, I like the blighted rounds a lot, especially when you get like two magazines of blighted rounds. It's just good DPS, but... With the proliferation weapon mod to where mm. it spreads to enemies nearby whenever you inflict them with the status effect, great stuff. Yeah, then everyone just winds up toxic. But honestly, I think Shut the it. skill that yeah, the skill that like snuck up on me and has turned this game on in a big way was gravity leap on the Devastator. Oh yeah, I, uh, yeah. I wasn't super attracted to the Devastator from early coverage. I didn't get a chance to try it in the demo. When I finally tried one uh, here, when the game full release, that gravity leap is. I love it so much. I love hopping in the air and then just deleting a fucking group of enemies. Yeah. I know, and on so, my Devastator, I have mods to where, like, it does, like, double the damage, and it mm -hmm. fully heals me whenever I drop on somebody or it heals me by, yeah. like, 20% or some nonsense. 
So it's just like, it's my emergency, like, get out, and then I teleport over to somebody to kill them that's outside of the fight, and then I'm fully healed, and I'm just, like, going again. Plus the blood splatter, whatever they die from was, it, is, like, some of the most visceral shit. I was gonna say, I love being on the spectator end of Ryan playing as Devastator, because I just <laughs> shoot dude, see him explode into blood stew, the <laughs> exploding into skill, chunks. The only that... skill to me that's better than that is just the freaking the trickster's time bubble because like you're just seeing all the little bullets going yeah, through and so like cool. the skeletons just like, and the, the head fact just that it's actually flying. rendering all that crap <laughs> as it's happening like yeah. it's just cool. It's great. Yeah, the gravity leap is the one that was broken in the demo. That's the one I'd use, and I'd literally be stuck five to ten seconds just standing there. Mm. Gotcha. Yeah, um, I don't use it in this one. Too. I use impale and. Um, Earthquake, or well, obviously the shield one would be the easier yeah. if you weren't. Uh, no, no, the the reflect okay. would be a lot more useful not playing by yourself, as yeah, you can be stopping. You're basically a walking shield for There's people a shooting that behind you. Fight while you're doing it, but it like yeah, but it, you, the efficiency of it, and so. you can take damage. Yeah, oh, so that's yeah. not. Yeah, but uh, I like impale because I have uh, one that lets me do more than one person, so I can mm -hmm. just impale a group. Skill is. Dope. The best skill is temporal bullets, Tom. I don't know what that is. I, oh, in terms of I DPS, for sure. It's for the trickster. Yeah, it just, if you combo with other skills, uh, like Chris would put up a time bubble and I would use uh, temporal bullets. And as people were stuck within the time bubble, I would just come in and just fucking wipe out units at a time with temporal bullets. Because I had a gun that had like a hundred round magazine at a time. And it was just a slaughter it was yeah incredible. it felt so good that's like the really main thing that got nerfed this. yeah i patch. didn't really like using them because they're kind of boring it's just like oh my gun's doing slightly different stuff or whatever and like i do it depends agree on with like people. what mods you have on that gun right so like one of my guns it had a fire modification on it so i had a i think 35 percent chance to inflict flame onto that person and then I had another uh, modification that brought my resistance down on any enemy mm -hmm. down by 35%. Yeah. So their resistance was lower and then their uh, affliction towards that ailment was higher. So it was like every time he would throw a time bubble up, anybody's trapped within that stasis was just getting fucking lit up, set on fire. And then yeah. in the meantime, Chris was like freezing them. I mean... Like, it, I know that incredible. they're broken. Like, literally, the late game build that people found within, like, a day or even less was just you get a mod that whenever you kill an enemy, your clip automatically refreshes. You just build out, like, life steal and crit and cooldown or something, and then you get one extra magazine on it just in case you don't kill something. But it was just annihilating the late game to the point where they nerfed all of the uh, ammo rounds and stuff. But my point is, like... It's just making you shoot slightly it's not differently. It's yeah. not. It's not like oh, I'm not, what I'm, I'm not going playing the game for. If I want to shoot a gun like that, I'm gonna go play a game that has slightly better gunplay. Not that the gunplay in this is bad. It's just I'm not trying to play just to buff myself up. Like that minuscule, that that. minuscule like effect. Like I don't yeah. know. I, I like the combination of different effects that the variety of like okay now I'm gonna have talk like the tox or the blighted rounds are cool as it looks yeah. cool seeing like the the poison bullet shoot and right. my favorite ability from Technomancer the, my main class right now I mean cryo turret's pretty great just in its utility I do love seeing dudes freeze as I'm like I throw my turret from behind cover and then seeing Ryan run around the side and then seeing dudes freeze and i don't need the help anyway but just seeing nice little silhouettes i can pop noggins <laughs> um and just get headshots and see them explode into shards of ice and blood and right. gore it's fun um and it adds a lot to it but i i feel like the trickster and the devastator probably have the most flashy abilities um I love right. the, the Trickster's teleport and, like, the big-ass sway uh, swipe. Just seeing them turn into skeletons and, like, completely deleting all of their armor to where you can just shoot the like shoot their health and destroy them. Yeah. It's yeah, one thing stupid. One thing I really love on the Trickster that we haven't talked about is the, like, level 13 ability. I don't know what it's called, but where you leave behind, like, an imprint of yep. yourself. It's and then you so can good. run Borrow in. Borrow time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Borrow time. And then you can 
yes. hunt the prey or whatever it's called to get yes. in behind so them. So good. That do your slashes, incredible. shotgun, and then teleport back out. It's mm-hmm. super cool. I mean, I was doing basically what you were talking about with the, your tank build, but it was more damage focused or whatever. But I was just using the borrowed time, the hunt for prey, and then the time bubble mm-hmm. for some of the fights that we were having issues on mm-hmm. because, like, it just makes you where borrowed time gives you a shield, or at least maybe one of my mods gives me a huge shield from yeah, it I think or it's something. A mod. And, and uh, you can, like, just instantly get to any of your teammates to revive them if they're having issues because you mm-hmm. have the time bubble and you just go back to your spot. And that's great. That's a fun loop overall. But, um, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> yeah. The only class we haven't really talked about is Pyromancer. I think they're, like, either three or four in terms of, like, the classes I prefer playing as so far. They still have two more abilities that could really impress me, but, like, the most fun I've had is using their like pool ability and using a mod on that that lets you target two people because you basically pull two guys out of cover right and siphon yeah and you also immobilize them and it's a quick heal so it's Mm -hmm. like you I kind of feel like I need that skill right now to keep alive because otherwise you have to kill enemies that are on fire which is not incredibly reliable for the character Um, right I've so uh when we were talking about our mains and what we've played I've my main is my Technomancer. I've got the Pyromancer to 12 and then everything, uh, the other two to 10. Um, and the Pyromancer to me feels like a a mage, like caster class. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's fun. It's not, it, it it's one of the classes that has forced me to get out of my cover style a lot because when i was playing trickster i was still doing a sniper a little bit while ryan was playing as a as a devastator because what i would do is i'd still have my sniper rifle and then i'd pop a couple shots weaken them teleport in do my swipe drop a time bubble let him go in just wreck them and then run out and then in combination with borrowed time which i haven't had much, really been able to use but like seeing that synergy there i love that i could just like okay i want to play this way now um yeah. there there's a lot of pyromancer isn't definitely isn't as flashy even though it's literally just flames everywhere but um it it's definitely i think the weakest alluring of the classes uh where all the other ones are like Devastator is your quote unquote tank. Trickster is your rogue, and Technomancer is kind of your priest or healer if you want the archetype. Mm-hmm. But you can definitely build in different directions. Pyromancer kind of just feels like Pyromancer no matter what way you build them. Right. Um, yeah. Which isn't great, but it's unfortunate because all the other ones I loved playing. And Pyromancer is fun, but a lot of that still comes down to the guns I'm using too. I mean, I think yeah. I like the Pyromancer more so than the Technomancer personally. Like fair. I'm not enjoying that one very much personally. Like, yeah, that's fair. That's what I love is the diversity of like those play styles for sure. They're yeah. close together for me for sure. I, I feel like the problem with him is that he does feel like a mage. He's supposed to be like the mage, but the mage is usually like, you know, very heavy damage. And I feel like everything else has way more damage potential than he does yeah. at this point. There's still yeah. those two more skills, like I said. But, like, especially starting skill Heat Wave does almost no damage. It just leaves the burning tick on them, which is kind of the whole point. Thermal Bomb is this big damage thing, but you have to lay it on a guy and then do enough damage to kill him to get him to explode and do yeah. the big amount of damage. It requires timing it just to make sure that they detonate. But when they do, it feels great. That's a great ability, but, yeah, it requires a little bit more teeing up yeah so thus far i've been relying quite a bit on volcanic rounds even though it's boring because it does just add a ton of dps and the character severely yeah. lacks it so far there the other skill i haven't talked about is my least favorite skill in the game so far it's called overheat it just like makes a really small bubble around you that hits all enemies for like literally it's nine damage but if they're on fire it's like 200 damage which is still pretty low detonate yeah yeah i, I don't know i don't I don't like that ability at all. I don't. I don't. I don't a see the usefulness of it. A lot of the Pyromancer is legit. They just somebody was playing League of Legends. They're like, what if Brand was in our game? Like, kind of feels like couple, Brand. Yeah. Yeah, like just a whole bunch of like Brand, where it's just like you're kind of boring. You're just doing a bunch of damage, and there's fire. Like everybody does this fire thing. So brand does a lot more damage than Pyromancer well, does. Yeah. <laughs> but it just like because I was playing it solo for a while and I felt like it, I was clearing missions like super freaking well as long as you're managing your resources really well mm-hmm. but like which is the burn and everything for healing and stuff but like 
It's a class where you cannot really turn your brain off as you're playing it. Yeah. Like, especially Ooh. early on, at least. Like, you need to be thinking in the game, but the other three, since their healing is just get in combat and do shit, and, like, all their skills synergize a whole lot better, I feel like. Like, the Pyromancer, I, I felt like I was having to think all the time about what I was doing because I need to mm -hmm. kill that guy. That guy needs to stay burned so I can get heal from him. That guy needs to die before the time tick goes away. Oh, I need to pull this guy out of cover now so that I heal. Like, yeah, it felt like the most think thinkable class. I don't know how to say it really. No, I, that, they, they do require a fair amount of like strategy and uh, resource management. You're totally right. I think. A fun combination I've done for a little bit is the, I know you don't like overheat, Chris, um, but like volca volcanic rounds uh, with the overheat and the thermal bomb. Mm -hmm. Because you just, like, with you have an assault rifle or LMG, you trigger it and you just spread across a, a field and then you prep the thermal bomb. Some of those people are on fire and then you activate overheat kills the dude that's the thermal bomb because it consumes that burn and does a shit ton of damage and then blows up and hurts a bunch of other people that were like on the cusp of death because of that overheat but it like it requires sitting down and making keeping that like at the forefront of your mind like you're saying uh like making sure that you're you're actively participating in your cooldowns at all times yeah there's there is one more ability that i completely forgot about because you get a level 13 that didn't play much beyond that but it creates like a small aoe around you also and oh, the turns ash everybody one? to ash yeah yeah which if there's a mod for that at some point where that also burns enemies i could see that being really useful for with overheat and well, the, thermal bomb to create a cool build that i would enjoy but the top tree is like dedicated to ash yeah, which so, it sucks. They actually they had to nerf one something in there because of the volcanic round specifically. But like the stuff that makes you deal more damage to ash enemies all got nerfed a little bit. Yeah, so well, it, it, it would be worth trying out and seeing if that appeals to you a little bit more. You know, Rob brought it up, but he talked about the skill trees, and that's nothing that we've even talked about yet this far into this episode. Is that you can build out each character basically in three different ways. Um, to give you a unique playstyle and benefits for each character. So really there's, you know, four times three is what, 12? 12, 12 different, you know, ways that you can really play these characters. And what, uh, eight abilities, eight skills? Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, the the amount of options are tremendous. And it's the like, ability to reset that tree at any time from the menu. Uh, yeah, three. I mean, it's just incredible. I mean, the, but like, as a whole, do. that's part of like, it's not an issue with the formatting, but like this playing in segments thing, looter shooters don't start to shine until you're like at, you have all your ability points activated and you mm, can totally. just fully go into trees and stuff. See, so like, I, I, I'm not I, I disagree. That's the best part about this being in segments is like we might be down on it now, but then we're going to get to these end game abilities and be like, yeah, this I know, shit. but I, like I would have seen the same thing just playing it all through. My point is like in Borderlands, like I'm getting those little points trickled in and stuff i'm like my build doesn't come together and then you hit like the max amount of points or like close to it and your build fully comes online and you're just like fucking everyone up and like you can see the different build paths and stuff it's like right now i only have like it's like seven class points or some nonsense it's like i can't get to all the stuff later that starts yep. making certain abilities tick on better like the devastator throughout the tank tree or whatever gets stuff where your bleed starts healing you you do more damage to enemies that are bleeding and all this stuff which would make like impale and certain mods for certain skills do a whole yeah. lot more i i totally i totally see where you're coming from and in, in the fact that like you don't get to see the payoff result of the time invested in your class toward like end game to where like okay this template is set now let's see what it can do right like... with, with me i pr i love sitting down and like part of what i enjoy about this game particularly is encourages is like sitting down and, okay i see, and how the 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 threads are tied yeah. in between the different trees right. so you can start dipping into a thing here or there yeah. a little bit i love that stuff and you can start to see i like sitting down and looking at okay i'm at this right now what can i start looking toward in the future but what can i do right now with the the things available to me they're not massive sure like one is simply a for like a devastator you get 
15 like your melee ability uh you get 15 percent piercing resistance for uh every enemy you hit for 15 seconds like if for like it it triggers and so you let's say you hit three people in a like a ground pound you're already at 45 percent piercing damage yeah. resist and like that's a little thing like that that doesn't seem flashy but then in practice it's like actually that's fucking huge right the right circumstance and so it's and that's like pretty early on in the build so you start to appreciate i like for me i start to appreciate the little things that uh they kind of signal i was like this is a, this could be something you start yeah it's something that, that is coming up you know i it's, mean it's i like that signifiers. The, i like getting to the the late game aspect for sure. and being able to and plus since you can kind of reset the tree just free no problem or whatever <laughs> which isn't a problem i like that it means that I'm not having to actually pay attention to the skills so much to think, oh, I need to invest in this so I can get here, so I can do this. And so I'm not really having to think about the late game. I just need to get there to start experiencing it. That's fair. So it's it's a good thing that you can reset the tree whenever you want. I've done it several times already as mm-hmm. the world tier keeps jumping up because I'm like, well, I need weapon damage more so than anomaly right now or totally. whatever else. But it's like, I'm not having to think about late game build because I know I can just reset it whenever I want. Yeah, and I think I think that's just a matter of like the perspective we have from the outset where like where our perspective is focused. Right. I'm just I'm just in the here and now and fine with that, but I totally right. get that desire to get to the end to see like right. no, but like I have t- 20 points invested and everything is like yeah. fine tuned. I totally get that. And I like I'm excited to get to that point. Um but there, there. Are, I, I just am appreciating the things that I'm getting to do with that for right now. Yeah. I also, I, I, you said twenty skill points. I really love that there are only twenty skill points, and you right. have to make a build of the character. Yeah. You can't have everything and be totally like, super mega powered or anything. Totally. Yeah, I do like that too. In general, gives you a path to pursue. All right. All I right. think that brings us to the end of the episode. Uh, I did want to ask you guys, how, how do you think they keep variety going like for the rest of the game, just new enemy types and stuff? Because we've only got two new abilities per class to like earn over the next 30 hours or so, including endgame, probably. Mods. It's mods, gonna yeah, be mods. mods. It's All just mods. mods and build diversity, mostly, for the most part, because like, there's just so many different options, and that's why they let you change it for free Three the way they do. tiers of mods. Yeah. yeah, and we've only seen part of tier one at this point. Yeah. I may right. have maybe on my main my technomancer I probably like, have like ten mod tier one yeah, mod like mod. the three legendaries I ended up getting on my one um, trickster or whatever like one of them like one of the legendary mods lets you shoot an enemy and then shoot another enemy and now they're linked together so yeah. whatever weapon damage you're dealing the one is doing it to the other and like there's all sorts of weird shit like that um, my trickster also has yeah. a shotgun whenever I kill people with it I get the golem buff for 1.5 seconds and i'm a that's fucking dope. trickster so that's like, dope and then there's obviously the one i mentioned where it's levitating them and then there's like there's a, like a head burst one where whenever you get headshots they like blow up in a specific way and it like triggers and chains to other enemies yeah and shit. like the legendary and the purple mods and all that stuff will start to make the builds get even crazier and like you can theory craft for like days off of this game's system so far. i i have a sniper rifle that gives me trickster shield oh, okay so <laughs> i'm just sitting from the back and popping them and so i start getting swarmed because you know a, a, a mob comes out and i've already got this health pool of shield built up right. and so then i can get out of it freeze them and like that stuff is super cool yeah. uh there's another one that i have a mod on my like an assault rifle that i don't know if any of y'all have seen it it's that like the chains where you shoot them and it has a possibility of wrapping them in chains and just stun locks them temporarily for like huh. three seconds and it and just it shows damage. Yeah, it does damage to him too, and that like makes him vulnerable. It's yeah. really cool. Yeah, like the the mods and the class changing and all that stuff, or the class skill changing and everything is where I think most of the diversity is going to come from. I don't really, I think they can do some cool stuff with enemy types and everything, but like at the same time, I'm not really holding my breath for it. For I sure, I've even seen some sneak peeks of some expedition yeah. stuff. I'm trying not to see it. But everybody that I watch on YouTube and Twitch is just playing this game right it's now. It's all it's about is, like, yeah. was it CT15 <laughs> runs? Yeah, we'll, yeah. we'll get so, into it. And I mean, we like, got a couple episodes before we'll get into it. And it's like, based oh, off of sure. the little bits I've seen, I'm not seeing different enemies. So I think primarily it's probably going to just be the changing yeah. your build and doing all that different stuff with all that. Yeah. 
Yeah, well, both uh, we got some community questions here oh, real yeah, quick yeah. that kind of fits into this. Uh, Groffles wrote in and asked, what is your favorite system to engage with right now? Um, also, how far do you see your interest with the game going after your current progress, Tom? Like, all the way to endgame? I mean, it kind of has to, doesn't it? For well, the yeah, for you. Podcast. You have to play at the end. <laughs> I, I, I could see myself playing this into next year if, if the community's there to come back yeah. and want to play. Like, I have I have a really, really damn good time just holding the sticks behind the, behind the screen on this. So if there yeah. are people who want to play it, I would be happy to continue to play. Exactly. Same. Yeah, I'm really I'm looking awesome. forward to finally making some three-man teams now that yeah. we can all play yeah. together. And, and seeing I mean, the next chunk of the game. I'm like, stoked to see where this is going. What he's saying, uh, the part of these games, what draws you in and makes you keep wanting to play is to keep having the promise or like the possibility of finding Legendary loot. People are complaining that they nerfed that in the patch or whatever. They changed something about earning and everything at the end of the quest and stuff. But like the way I was seeing people get these late game builds, it was like within no time at all, the game was going to be dying for you anyway. So like... People are making the argument that them nerfing the loot process is making the game boring because you're not getting stuff. But at the same time, if you get the loot faster, you're making the game boring. Yeah, like, yeah that's the that's... age old issue with looter shooters in general, like how many exotics you get in in Destiny yeah. and the drop rate of that right. anthem. It was a huge issue with the rate I think... of which. Yeah. Oh, I, I think that talks. Like, so I have, I've stated before, like 2,500 hours in Borderlands 2. And part of that reason is because a lot of those legendaries had very low drop rates. So my exactly. friends and I would keep coming back trying to get the legendary we wanted. Where in Borderlands 3, I have a little less time because I was able to get legendaries to fill up a build a lot quicker because there's so many more of them. So they drop at a lot higher rate. Right. Exactly. Um, so uh, so I, I, I hear lowered legendary drops. And part of me is like, oh, and another part of me is like, that means I get to play more. Right, exactly. That's my whole take on it, too. Like, people are griping about it, but it's because this generation of gamers is so freaking entitled all the damn time. Like, the server issues are going on. They're like, oh, are you going to give us legendaries to compensate? It's like, why? Which they are, by the way. But speaking <laughs> they of which, they actually, the, the, the apology pack that they're doing, that's super cool. Yeah. Yep. yeah they don't even have to do that nice super thing. cool thing. Yeah. Right. As, uh, as far and as for, like, uh, oh, you got it. Go. For favorite system... Uh, to engage with it's it's uh, the weapon variants I think auto is loot. super cool. You're wrong, it's auto loot. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> down, <laughs> down on the D pad. <laughs> Being able to take Best so system. Which I I assume none of us use our sidearms unless we absolutely had to. Oh no, I have like not touched the sidearm for like yeah. barely. Well, I, so, I was using it a lot today actually when we were playing. I Sometimes. made my sidearm fully automatic and gave it explosive rounds, and now I just <laughs> want to use my sidearm, and you get to do that because of weapon variants. You get to try, okay, maybe I'd like this rifle in a burst pattern. Maybe I'd like this LMG in a stabilizing pattern, so its magazine's a little smaller. It's got a slower fire rate, but it deals more damage per bullet. Yeah, that stuff's pretty cool. I use a revolver with time slow bullets whenever I can if I get flooded, and then I will just pop a bunch of people with my time slow bullets, get out, and then get one of my other guns to um, re-engage, like if I have a shotgun or something, and then continue that loop. Right. So I'm rotating co between my guns all the time, yeah. not just I because think, of ammo being out. I think my favorite system to engage with is definitely the class respecking on the fly and mm -hmm. being able to go into any kind of firefight and be able to figure out what pattern of skills I can put together to complete this puzzle from these firefight encounters that I'm getting into is incredibly satisfying to me. And as far as like interest in the game, I 100% see myself playing this like way into Endgame. I'm very notorious on this podcast specifically for beating and deleting. <laughs> Whereas yeah. like I don't see myself beating this game and deleting it off my PlayStation Five anytime soon. Yeah, yeah. That, this is a uh, I buy most games physical. This is one of the few that I bought digital because I I plan on playing it for a long time it's going to be in rotation you know i don't want to switch that disc yeah. in and out over and over totally. and as far as my favorite system it's uh bathing in the blood of my enemies of course i don't know if you guys have found the bath yet where you put the blood of your enemies I, i'm playing with ryan as a devastator i'm drenched in them. <laughs> uh we got one more community comment here from grand pappy uh so Christine. knowing when to back off and when to rush in for help uh Devastator specifically has been both frustrating and incredibly rewarding depending on the groove I'm in. If you can remember around when did you the combat start to really click with you? Except for Tom. Just, uh, for just after the parties. Demo. 
that have also played single player, does that rush retreat style change much when you've got second to third players? For I think me, it absolutely changes. I mean, yeah, it, it absolutely does, especially with world tier. Uh, goes a long way. That like the the bullet sponges being more spongy um, adds to combat being sometimes a little bit more varied. I think. Um, but the game really started to come online for me post demo, post demo chunk. Because like when you start to see weapon mods, that's my favorite system in the game. I should state is like weapon mods in particular. There's so much depth and variety there that you can change at a drop of a hat. Just go talk with Sahidi and you can swap out your stuff, you know, yeah, that's at pretty some much cost. What I, I think, too. Like, for me, it's the weapon mods that's, like, my favorite system overall. It's not just weapons, but it's also the armor. Like, to the point I was on the demo up until they patched out where you can't get purples from the shop. I was right. sitting there every hour checking both the fucking <laughs> shops just to have that slight little chance at a purple one. It was, like... 0.1% or some stupid bullshit but like because I want to see the mods of the game mm -hmm. and I want to s start seeing what can happen through bu the builds and stuff so I do agree with that overall that the mods are like the better yeah. system for me Every time I'm leading a lobby with genetics, he keeps asking why we're not going back to the city to check the shops every hour. I know, it's literally like, I'm just like, they might have purples, why can't we? I keep bitching about the fact that there's not shops in the hubs as you go. Like, you get to yeah. the snow mountain, there's no shop. I and think like, that's a little lame. That. It's like, why? I don't understand why that's the case. Just pull up the same store. Yeah, yeah, it should just be the same store. I don't know why those people... Maybe it's an instance thing that they yeah. have tied to specifically it's only stable here. I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea I, either. I, I couldn't say, but I yeah, I think the game really starts to get into its groove once you get like a couple more abilities around where the demo didn't let you get to. And like it's eight or nine, level eight or nine, maybe ten. It's sort of like, okay, I see what we're going for here. I think it's the second section, right? Once you get into the first city yeah. after Rift Town, that's where combat really started to click because not only do they start throwing in more hordes, the world tier starts to build up, but you also get a new enemy variant with like the weird mutated, you know, anomaly creatures. And that was when it definitely clicked for me when uh, Chris and I were playing is because I know that we went through an entire battle section and I did not even get touched one time. And mm. that entire yeah. section just mowing hordes down and not even getting touched, it, it was great. It felt so incredible. But mm. you could definitely tell a difference between, you know, playing together versus by myself. Because when I was by myself, I was hiding behind cover, retreating, you know, a lot, mm -hmm. you know, yeah. and just pop in, pop out. But like when Chris and I were playing, you know, I was like running all over the fucking map, like getting into people's faces and just like constantly running, you know. Like, I need more enemies. They're all t yeah. they're too fast. <laughs> yeah. The, the pace never slowed down. It was like a constant movement. Whereas like by myself, it was definitely more like pop, shoot, pop, shoot, pop, shoot. And yeah. I, I think a lot of that is the free revive that you get and the fact that you can revive each other even if you use that free revive, whereas you have to be really safe and secure in single player because you die and you're going to reload. And that's just yeah. the way it is. Yeah. I think yeah, another I think reason the oh. first city is like what comes online is that's when you start getting more and more blues so you have the ability to mm -hmm. mod exactly what you're doing right. a little bit more and so your builds start start to have a semblance of coming online as opposed to just oh you have this skill you have this amount of armor now it's like oh this piece of armor augments this skill in this way and then this one augments it in this way and... right i do like all that that is pretty much towards the end of the demo when your world tier hits a point where you actually start getting blues properly or yep. whatever mm -hmm. so that's why like by the time i finished the demo on my trickster and I did the Devastator as well, but like I was actually stuck in a gameplay grind loop that I liked because I was finding stuff that actually altered my character. He said it. <laughs> altered <laughs> my character. <laughs> All right, y'all. Does that bring us to the end? I, I think so. so. Uh, Anything I, else? Yeah, I want to ask it. Are you? Are you guys going to keep letting your world tier go up? Do you think to try and get those legendaries and stuff, or you think I'm you're try? I'm gonna, I'm gonna try. try, but I feel like there's gonna be a point where it's like, this is not you can't fun anymore. Do it right, yeah. Because like even sitting at six and seven, some of those fights on the peak or whatever is like, we failed that one in particular like so many fucking times, and you do have to play like such a little bitch in order to get through it. <laughs> and then it's like, I feel like eventually you're gonna hit a point where unless you have god gear like just already ready to go for that world tier you're not gonna want to keep it at that probably 
Yeah. Probably. But I don't know. I'm definitely gonna try. Like I'm not one to just back away from challenges like that. So. Yeah. I think you definitely gotta community. find the world tier that fits with your playstyle. Totally. Yeah. You know. Which I love that you can do. Right. Yep. Exactly. The option is there, and that's what really counts. You know. Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. So that brings us to the end. Anybody else got any lasting comments they want to say before we kick off the end of segment one? It's where, on... where do you uh, think the story's going? Yeah. Oh. Uh, that Tom? I'm not really sure on. Yeah, Tom, what do, you, what do you think? <laughs> yeah, what do you think, Tom? Tell us about the Nowhere. story, Tom. Oh. oh. <laughs> Thanks for the input. <laughs> Appreciate it. I mean, I hope it goes somewhere, but yeah, the story right now, I... I could give a flag. Okay, if you whatever. had the choice to choose where it was going, what would you like to happen? I don't know. Oh, cool. <laughs> uh, I, I mean, I I hope it digs more into like the the problems. Like, I hope it is the humans' fault that they completely fuck this planet, and that it is like more of a narrative about the problems with colonialization and abandoning our problems to just find a new world uh that's i think that's deeper but... getting from the like the flashback thing you had where you see that woman walking uh with no information whatsoever about her you just see like a, an image or a memory of some woman on like what seems like this planet or something i wonder if it's like uh, yeah i don't know if it's like some sort of first touched down and then interacted with something and then caused chain of events that all became bad or mm, yeah that's definitely the vibe i'm getting though i feel like it is um enoch the planet is self-aware and is trying to fight off a virus of the humans coming oh. and trying to colonize on it i want to say the name of a game but it's a it's a major spoiler i won't uh-huh. that's <laughs> like that that's like that movie i can't the happening or whatever like by oh, yeah. the time you get to the end of it, oh, it's God. like a weird movie. People you had were killing to themselves the because, happening. yeah. I mean, okay, like the movie's not the greatest thing in the world, but it's like at the end of the day, it's like okay for just popcorn's sake or whatever. But like at the end of the day, like once it. you get to the end of the story and like you figure that out at the very end, you're like, oh, okay, it's it's like it's not great, but your story premise is there. The best it's thing just about that executed very poorly. Best thing about that film was when Mark Wahlberg is like terrified of a plastic plant. Yeah, <laughs> it's some, shit. It's some shit about bees in that movie. But like, like, like what he's talking about the planet fighting totally. off a virus. That's the exact same storyline, basically. So, but um, I could see less pretentious. To me, just off of the the thing with Seth talking about there being an altered war and a bigger altar that he has to fight. To me, it's like. Even the gameplay grind loop of all the loot and stuff feels like a very Diablo-ish type of thing or whatever. And mm-hmm. then like Diablo three, you're fighting through all these normal enemies and shit, and then you get to a point at what where you're like up in Nephilim and shit, and you're like fighting actual angels and devils and all this other crap. Mm-hmm. To me, that's the vibe I'm getting right now. I don't think it's gonna fully go there, but I feel like they could because right now you're just in the human war with the little grunges and stuff. And then eventually you should be encountering more altars and shit, I feel like. Or like yeah. some godlike society that's built off of those giant creatures or some shit. I don't know what they would be doing. Yeah, because supposedly but... we're already going into an area in this very next section that humans don't go to and come back from. So, so yeah, could right. very well be. So, I don't know. <laughs> that's probably wishful thinking to some extent, just given the general storyline past of the developers yeah. yeah at least you'll get to shoot a lot of cool shit exactly. yeah. hey That's you think that matters you think yours is a wishful thinking i'm hoping for deep marin narrow meditative about about a col- colonialization right i know <laughs> that is true <laughs> well we'll find out in the next episode if we're starting to head that direction true um so that brings us to the end of this episode um genetics you got anything you want to plug uh just my YouTube channel is Victorian Genetics. Let's say it. Twitch.tv slash Victorian Genetics. What was that one more time? Sorry. Plugs. No, no. Your What was your channel name again? Sorry. Oh, w, uh, it's just YouTube.com slash Victorian Genetics. Okay, cool. My name, basically. Hell yeah. Rob, uh, what you got going on? Draft Punks. Uh, we record every week. We have, we've been having a bunch of fun lately. Most recent episode, we... Uh, 
drafted video game levels with Alex Stadnick of Game Informer, and that was a blast. Um, and yeah, on all the socials, everything, it's real draft punks. We stream sometimes. I will be streaming Zelda every Sunday and cruising through the story, or the, all those games, the, the official timeline, uh, and having a blast with that. Playing Skyward Sword right now. Game's got problems, but it's also cool. It's, it's not a bad game. I know. I'm, I'm, I'm planning to try and do on my Twitch the, the at least the new trilogy for Tomb Raider since Plug that's another Twitch. 25th anniversary. It's still just Victorian genetics. It's all the same. But 1996 was too big of a year for video games, basically, because yeah. Chris is doing 25th for Resident Evil. He is doing the Pokemon 25th, I think. And yeah. then yeah. Tomb 35th. Raider has a 25th. So is it 25th or like, 35th for Pokemon? 20, uh, 25th, 25th, okay, 25th, 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 and then also every Saturday and Sunday nights, usually when we're not recording podcasts like we are tonight, uh, I stream on my personal channel, twitch.tv slash tactical dreamer. Uh, right. And I just play whatever kind of. Uh, twitch.tv slash spelunkers. Now that my PC's uh, out from the infirmary, I'll be back to streaming Pokemon every Tuesday, 7 Eastern, for at least two hours, mate, probably longer for the next episode since I missed a couple, trying to get through every mainline. Chris, are we announcing? Let's announce. Let's talk about it. Let's announce. Yeah. Yes. So we recorded yesterday the first episode of "Gotta Rank 'Em All," the Pokemon ranking show, okay. uh, coming to a podcast service soon to you, Chris, myself, and a guest are gonna rank all of the Pokemon in the most officially arbitrary all fashion possible. One thousand and sixteen. You're gonna rank them based on which ones you would screw. <laughs> <laughs> If you want to come on and defend Pokemon based on which ones you would most like to screw, you are more than welcome. I would never. I'm just saying there's a whole subset of people, and you said the most arbitrary way possible. That's the first thing I thought of. That is a pretty arbitrary way. And uh, the video versions are going to be going up on Spelunker's YouTube channel, correct? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And the uh, audio version will be in the same feed that you already listened to this one. I can't wait till you get to having all... 2016 and then basically spend an hour of recording saying each one <laughs> reading down the list that'll be episode 52 to finish off the year a full year here's a question um have you guys ranked ampharos yet just a little inside info have no. you ranked ampharos and is it number one and if not quit the fucking show right now stop it <laughs> we have not yet ranked ampharos just shut the show down it ain't worth it <laughs> Look, we get a, we have a randomized Random. machine. It's extremely scientific. It prints out all the numbers for us. Oh, Don't science! Question. You say I'm in science. Yes, <laughs> science. We um, almost had uh, two more special guests last night because Tyler and I were thinking about hopping in the channel and belching, and then I'm okay. I was. <laughs> <laughs> well, I limited that channel to three people. Luckily, anyway, so you could not have come in. I can mod it. I was gonna Don't say, mod my it. channel. I can easily <laughs> mod it. it more. Sure we can all mod it. <laughs> you would shit, never. I got mod abilities you would never now. dare. <laughs> Tom, plug our shit. Uh, the beacon of light of my week, uh, Wasted in Wasteland. Normally on Saturdays, um, except for when we record this. Now it's Fridays. Uh, well, Fridays, I don't know what the time's really going uh, to be. 7 Central. Yeah, 7 Central, Eastern. 8 Eastern. Yeah, and set on Saturday time is usually what five central, six eastern. Uh, yeah, yep. And we get drunk and play Wasteland. I think we're gonna. We probably got like three episodes. I think we beat in three episodes. No fun. Not, way. I, I heard y'all wrote credits. You should just call it. Well, we did. We yeah, yeah we'll, <laughs> we'll beat it again in three episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't see us beating it in three episodes, but we'll uh, see. We've been we've been hitting the stride. I think we I think we're gonna do good. I yeah. believe in you. The game's incredible. So, that's right, it's a great game. Um, so that brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you for sticking with us all the way to the end. It became a shit show, but it was super fun. <laughs> um, the next section for part two of the Outriders game exploration will be all the way up through Utagark. 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 That's a made-up word. 
I don't know. It is a it's, made up word, that's for sure. Utar Gak is the section all Utar-gak. the way up through it. And once you get to the end of Utar Gak, then you stop right there. Don't hopefully you go no further. Hopefully we see Gary the Mollusk again. That's yeah, right. I hope, I, I'm looking forward to it. Just if don't you burn. don't Mow. see a clan of mollusks <laughs> at the end of Utargak, this game sucks. Period. <laughs> <laughs> Uninstall. Literally unplayable. No Gary the Mollusk. Delete. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thanks for tuning in. We will see you back here in two weeks. Bye. 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 I'm not playing. Perfect timing. You can see it like. <laughs> fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Yeah, I was. You guys are all involved. incorrect because the best. Ep- oh, hold on, hold on. Wait, wait. I gotta mute you first. Okay, and that's fine. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah. He actually <laughs> muted you. We don't know what you're saying right now. <laughs> Here's the oh. funny thing it won't let me unmute him. Oh, oh no. no. Oh no. <laughs> You had to break it. <laughs> Fuck you, Tom! <laughs> I heard that. <laughs> uh, I can see it coming. I don't know. It won't let me unmute him now. Raise your hand. Maybe then I can unmute you. Here, watch. Does that help? Oh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Don't worry, though, you passed your health check. I have it myself, <laughs> asshole. <laughs> now I'm Tyler. <laughs> Next time we should all wear our Tyler shirts. <laughs> you guys missed my joke earlier where Ryan's like, I have your face on my shirt, and I was like, I have my face on my face. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke? <laughs> 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 Oh Are God. you still workshopping it, or was that the final version? You know, Tyler, we got a lot of laughs earlier. <laughs> we got a lot of laughs right now. Just... Are you recording? Yeah, oh, fuck yeah. I'm recording, yes. Fuck. So much stays of this in. is going in. <laughs> it stays in. <laughs> fuck you. I mean, we um, can talk about al- alchemical signs again if you want. I hate this show. I hate you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even like. I don't like podcasts with you guys anymore. <laughs> Dicks. I didn't say anything. <laughs> Rob's cool. Fuck you. Fuck, <laughs> fuck you. you. Fuck Rob's you. cool. You're cool. Fuck you. I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm having a great time. <laughs>